Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's me. It's about to. Uh, it's me, the New Year baby. Sadly, we had to put the New Year baby in the void because it's no longer New Year. It is currently the year. It is now our year. But I will still uh, wish uh, played in chat currently uh, a happy new year, a happy Luna new year. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so today is uh, the kickstart of... I, I'm, I almost said project, a thing, a thing that I have been wanting to do. Like, I have been talking about doing for like... A year and a half by this point. The thing is, like, there is a Vietnamese text, there is a Vietnamese short story written during the colonial era that I feel like a lot of people would appreciate very much being able to read nowadays, like, internationally. That's a strong word. I mean, like, yeah, internationally, but, like, currently I'm just going to try to, like, translate it. Like a draft translation from Vietnamese to English is weird because it is one of the like classic like a, like it 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 has become like a part of like Vietnamese literature canon I think by this point next to Legit like, Gill and like even older texts. So uh, the fact that like it has never been translated like officially like there is no official english translation that i can find online anywhere at all like that pains me i feel like that's not good <laughs> and like it's weird that uh you know it's weird that that is the, the thing it is it's weird that there's not like any option that i have right now uh it's weird that people have not like jumped on it yet so uh it's up to me i'm, I'm doing it hello hello alex welcome to stream Oh yeah, uh, uh, so yeah, today I, I am going to attempt to uh, start my draft of the translation for uh, this, this, uh, uh, this, this short story. Uh, you will hear me, I, I think like my, my, 
like the the, the bullet points for today is like I'm gonna try and like clean uh clean the uh like context and stuff like that for this uh, short story at first and then I will like start the translation by like reading through like a page at the time and like start making notes and stuff like that. Um, I have like a physical uh, notebook right here with me, like a gift from a friend. It is very a very cute book. I I just realized with this colored up page, it would be uh my my highlight pen would probably not work. So I'm gonna like put that away. I'm gonna use a something else. I don't know. You know what? I have a fucking Pluto pen here. I'll use that. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna do everything like uh physically instead of uh uh digitally for this one. I feel like that's gonna be good for me. Yeah, so let's go. Oh fuck fuck yeah, hell yeah. Alex feel free. I hope this is gonna be something good for you. Uh I'm probably gonna keep my desktop audio on mute so I don't have to worry about that while translating stuff, but I will be putting music on, on my end and feel free to put on your uh, background music of choice when you want. Uh, I'm going to be putting on like, yeah, I know. Thank you, SMG. Uh, I will be putting on uh, the Zenka uh, album by Zoom. Just to be funny, you know. I think that that works well because it is all instrumental. It's also progressive rock. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep it on the down low. Heck yeah. Let's go. Let's go to the screen. Hi, hello. I hope it's working. Freak, I think it's froze. Oops. <laughs> Wait, hello? Obviously, it's supposed to be working. Yeah, it, it seems like it's gonna be like a bit slow. Mm hmm, where's my freaking... Can I refresh this? Like... Yeah, yeah, I think it's like doing things. I'm not capturing cursor, thank you. Is she on screen? Hi. Yeah, I think it's like getting better now. Hi, hello. Is the thing, is the stuff. Heck yeah. Uh, Rick is a little bit. Stuffy in here. I'm gonna open my, uh, my my uh, the fucking balcony door a little bit. Yeah. I'm I'm actually gonna talk about this notebook a little bit because I I I really love this one. This one is by a friend. This one is uh, given to me. It was gifted to me on my birthday by a friend. This is a real lotus leaf. This is real leaves that they like preserved and paste on there. It it feels like soft. It's really really cool. Yeah, and like inside, obviously like re recycled paper. It's pretty sturdy paper as far as everything goes. I hope it works well with the the marker thing that I have. This is my standard student marker thing the the kind of like fine line brush uh pen thing it has that oh hello libra welcome to stream uh yeah it is really cool uh this is that you you can probably read like the stuff that is going on on this notebook in here like kudos to uh my friend my IRL boy for uh gifting me this thing. I genuinely really love it. I feel like this is like a good uh use of this notebook. This though this is uh the physical copy of the story that I uh wanted to translate today. Hell yeah. 
Nice. I I'm using my phone. I'm using a an a a webcam app that like lets me use my phone as a webcam. And like the rig is like so fucking like unstable. <laughs> it's really funny. I'm gonna take like a picture of the rig that I got going on in here later for y'all to see. Yeah. yeah. Uh this is him. This is Damn Cow. This is the writer of this uh sorry. Uh the uh short story I wanna translate today is called Chi Fiao. This is the name of the main character. I think the there was a previous name of the first draft that was uh it, the first draft of this story was named uh Gelo Bai Tu, which means uh the old brick oven. Not not the brick oven as in like a <laughs> I just realized how that sounded English. The the oven that the, not the oven like the fucking kiln i think that's that's more like the thing the kiln like how to like the the thing you make uh, to you use to like fire bricks to make bricks yeah kiln yeah that's the word yeah that's why i need the the, the fucking uh audience today because like i'm i'm gonna be like hopping between vietnamese and english a lot and oh my god i don't think i'm like ready for that i i need y'all for this one <laughs> But yeah, that's the thing. Uh, it both of, uh, the the uh, uh, the brick kiln is like one of the main plot point in this one. Not not exactly a plot point actually. It's like a piece of the setting as has become like a character. It is like the bookend of uh, the series of the, of the story. Uh, but like it, later on, it got renamed to uh, the name of the main character, which is Chi Fao. Uh, I will give probably like a short synopsis of it. Uh, Tifiao is about uh, a town uh, drunk, a town uh, thug, who uh, was uh, fucking who who like who got forced basically from birth into uh, uh, poverty. Of course, because it is like you know a colonial uh, era Vietnam. Uh, it is uh, and like. He uh was framed and went to prison later on in his life and like when he came out he came out of prison he got uh sort of recruited by the town head to do like dirty work for him and of course like to maintain like that that relationship between the town head and uh the main character like he uh uh like kept his yeah, he kept the Chi Fiao's life like miserable from one end to another just so like he remains a thug and like works for him and like the story follows through a bit of that and uh leads to uh the few moments of Chi Fiao's life where he experiences happiness uh with a, a friend uh with a, a tentative lover that then by like you know the the custom the society and the people in power keeping those things in place uh torn away from him uh which led to him uh realizing that he did never got a chance to be a good person and uh taking down uh the people the person who he saw he thought uh was uh, uh was responsible for his fate which is you know the town head and then like killing himself it is a pretty fucking st like heavy story it starts everything like uh it's like anything considered but you know it is like colonial era literature is only like this <laughs> there's only this shit it is a very good story yeah the heart so I mean, like, from the, <laughs> probably from the synopsis you know why I want to translate this and why I'm like I'm like surprised nobody has translated this stuff yet. I think like I really, really got into the idea of translating this one, especially after like Squid Game got made on Netflix. <laughs> I was like, hey, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, like, poor country is the same. <laughs> oh, it is very bad. Good core. Thank you, Flayed. I do be like that. I'm, I'm glad to be like that. Uh, the... You know the kill Bagu's chorus probably like a 
I, I like that thing because, uh, you know, it is a kiln. I, I technically did grow up on this. This, this was taught in uh, high school, which is like, kind of a shame <laughs> in a way because uh, high school literature classes were not good. Like genuinely, like I had to get out of school for like, a few years to gain to regain my love for like classic literature, because like otherwise it was like school was practically like beating like the love of literature out of me. It was not good, but now I am here and now I am dragging all of you with me. <laughs> I am doing this and I am implicating everyone. <laughs> Fuck yeah! So uh. The story is, I actually before the story is written, uh, during, it, the story was written during uh, the Vietnamese colonial era, the French colonial era, which started like 1885 and lasted until 1944 or 1945, uh, which is like, uh, uh, the Sep uh, September second is nineteen forty five was uh, Vietnamese the Vien the Vietnamese Independence Day, and we like officially declared uh sovereignty from you know uh being a French uh, colon a French colony. Uh, after that one like after that date, uh, literature took like a turn towards like slightly to greatly more propagandist. And sometimes it's like grading to read, but like I I feel like pre nineteen forty five, a lot of really really good story, uh came to be. There was another uh novel that I sort of mentioned sometimes when I talked about like Viet classic lit, which uh, is uh Soda by Wu Chongfu, which is like a satire a satirical uh novel. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I still have like parents and grandparents who like, uh, was was a like, born in like nineteen uh nineteen twenties around that era and like did witness like the, uh, the Independence Day, and you know all of the depravity that happened before then too, uh, the other uh. Uh, story that I was talking about so at all was like, a satirical story that happens like in the in the city the urban area of the country whereas this like this is uh, a more rural area like a smaller community like ruled by one to two great like you know people who have more uh, who have like connections who had connections to uh, the French reign or you know, uh, people who, uh, somehow like scrabbled off, uh, off of their like lineage, their uh, like generational wealth, wealth to uh become like head of town and stuff like that, to come into like positions of small uh powers. But small power back then still means that you are like, responsible for the lives of like upwards of twenty like people at least. Yep, those people. <laughs> Exactly, Alex. So, uh, uh, a lot of Nam Gao's work, which is like, which includes Shi Fao, is on a smaller scale than uh, the kind of work that Wu Chang was on. Uh, Wu Chang Fu was like a very, very prolific uh, reporter. He wrote like three hundred uh, live reports and stuff like that. But like, it was a lot of those were lost to time, and we only have like two some or something like in full right by now. But he did write like, also a lot of. He wrote like fucking four or something uh, uh, novels, like literal novel length uh, works in his like nine years of writing. He was also one of the people who got paid by like, you know, the, the amount of work. So he really was just pumping the shit out. He only. He started writing by uh, when he was like 20 something and he died very early in his life. Like, like just a nine years later so like from the moment like he he died while he was still writing uh nam Gao later on became like a nam Gao, however like yeah he died and on in 1951 and he was 
he became a soldier later on. He he became like a revolutionary soldier. Uh, I remember. Yeah, and Tifia was written. It was released like it was published in nineteen forty one. So you know, four years before the the Great Famine in nineteen forty five that uh, spurred on and probably made the success of uh, the revolution. Uh, that's just like the the context that I can give you right now. There will be a lot in here that I will probably like uh, have to uh, if I can uh, elaborate on. There will be like stops I will have to make. I will probably have to look up some stuff too, because <laughs> I, you know, is is a, an amount of years between this uh, when this was written and where, when I live right now. So. Uh, there are things that will have been lost, but a, a good thing is that like the Viet language, like the modern Viet language, was built on the back of people who wrote like this. So uh, I will probably not have to look up like the actual like I I do like struggle to read like ancient Viet uh, writings like uh, Dai Viet Cổ Phong or like no that's not the fucking word that's uh the fucking uh what's the no like uh. Fucking goddamn it! I forgot the name. Lingan Chikwai, yeah, Lingan Chikwai got me like in the tizzy because I, I had to parse it, because it's you know the the grammar back then was like a, a lot like different, and Lingan Chikwai was written like and translated by someone, uh, in like the fourteen hundreds or something like that, and it and then it just got like you know transliterated to uh, modern Vietnamese. It's not easy to read. <laughs> For me, I think like, a lot of people don't have problems like that, but I, I do. I, I have problems. <laughs> yeah, but now I'm, uh, with this, I will have an easier time. Yeah. Vietnamese has, like, a very tumultuous, uh, history, all things considered. I, you know, it, it would be cool to, like, start, like, working backwards from here. Maybe, like... Later on, I will be reading like Ling Nachi Kwai and stuff like that on stream with y'all, and we will parse it together. And maybe you guys will learn Vietnamese, because I will be reading some of these out loud. Uh, the process right now is uh, I will probably uh, read like the whole block of text. <laughs> One thing that that is with Dam Cao is that that man does not know about the line break. <laughs> you can probably see here, like this whole thing is like, you know. A, a whole like fucking wall of text here mostly because like uh the, like modern vietnamese like with the latin uh alphabet was not fully uh formalized back then like the the like grammar rules and stuff like that are just kind of all over the place you can write about it however the fuck you want uh so like <laughs> this results in me will probably having to read me reading like one page at a time, probably meaning me reading this whole fucking block of text at this at a time. I will read those out loud, uh, and uh, then I will start like translating like one block at a time. How about that? I will be no like I I bought a physical copy because I want to start like making notes both in here and in my notebooks. And I will have to like open these like parallelly. Oh fuck! Sorry, I just touched my fucking uh mic. Sorry about that. Uh, and uh maybe I will have to like uh I I will have to like ask you about like some words or something like that, because I'm I'm on my uh OBS screen right now and it's a bit hard to like looks things up while I'm here because also my, my phone is using is being used as a webcam right now. I will be needing y'all, thank you. Okay, let's let's start. <coughs> let's start. Chi Fiao Nam Cao Hắn vừa đi vừa chửi bao giờ cũng thế cứ rượu xong là hắn chửi bắt đầu hắn chửi trời có hề gì trời có của riêng nhà nào rồi hắn chửi đời thế cũng chẳng sao đời là tất cả nhưng chẳng là ai tức mình hắn chửi ngay là tất cả làm vũ đại nhưng cả làm vũ đại ai cũng nhịn chắc là trừ mình ra không ai lên tiếng cả tức thật tức thật ồ oh, thế này thì tức thật tức chết đi được mất đã thế hắn phải chửi cha đứa nào không chửi nhau về hắn 
nhưng cũng không ai ra điều mẹ kiếp thế thì có phí điều không thế thì nó có khổ hắn không không biết đứa là chết mẹ nào lại để ra cái thân hắn cho hắn khổ đến nông nỗi này à, phải đấy hắn cứ thế mà chửi hắn cứ chửi những đứa chết mẹ nào để ra thân hắn để ra cái thằng trí phèo hắn nghiến răng vào mà chửi cái đứa để ra trí phèo nhưng mà biết đứa nào đã để ra trí phèo có mặt trời biết hắn không biết cả làng vũ đại cũng không ai biết ok that's the first paragraph uh, i'm probably gonna make notes in here in uh, put a pencil actually <cười> because like, I might be like the, the space in here is limited so I will probably be making like a lot of uh, corrections so uh, pencil is probably the better uh, choice here uh, the starting point uh, I, one of the like limits that I of English that I very early I got up to is like the amount of like third uh, person pronouns that yo god like this is a third person pronoun han is just like he but also it has like a like you know a negative connotation han is usually used for like uh a villain like type of character and by this point it is very a very like literature kind of uh pronouns like you don't really use it in right in, in like speaking anymore unless you are like a fucking like dan may head or something like that because like dan may uses han a lot <laughs> i don't fucking know but also like teen literature to like to to uh refer to a uh like love interest like a bad boy's type of love interest or like a, a rascal little guy or something like that uh but yeah uh han and yeah guys i feel like guys like more i guess major version of han uh han is just like you know uh a fucking a, a little bastard but yeah i would be more like someone who is like actually uh like threatening <laughs> yeah bad boy if you're like alex you're right you should be <laughs> we should all actually be usually this one actually uh shout out to he that he's in the chat uh, but yeah, Ga is more like threatening, but also like more uh, neutral in tone. Ga can be used for anyone who like is a man, I guess, or you know, is is the is, is a masculine person who seems so slightly threatening, like someone who is like you know like <laughs> has a big aura or something like that, but who isn't out to get you right now, who is not like antagonistic some like a, a dude guys a lot more a dude than han han guys also like not super like common nowadays anymore in in speaking both of those are more like literature type things you, you can imagine how fun writing uh slash in uh vietnamese is also how like fucking embarrassing <laughs> can you imagine can you imagine having this fucking extensive like uh amount of uh third person uh, pronouns and having fucking semi uke shit uh they they put on a number of those i cannot i cannot read things in Vietnamese anymore it hurts me it literally like every time i did that i it, it like every time i read a book in Vietnamese, it, it dealt me damage i can't i can't do it anymore I would like to write in Vietnamese again soon, though. I, I still remember it. I, I, I was loving it. And buddy with Chui. Chui. Chui, specifically like swearing. I would probably translate this as he was swear cursing? Maybe it's cursing is like the, the better word for this. You will be... Uh, subjected to my horrible fucking normal handwriting instead of my better uh comic handwriting so uh that, that's the thing hope you can read any of this uh as he walked probably this uh the, the thing is like Swearing is not swearing at my gesture. That's like that's actually a very like 
cool like that that's a cool detail because actually like later on in uh the uh, paragraph uh he was actually like, start swearing at things that they that like don't respond to him so like i think like cursing also actually worked uh i'm gonna make like Oh, played. You have not seen anything. Yet. It will get worse as it goes. My handwriting will not stay this way. It will become worse. Uh, but yeah, I will keep like both uh options here. I I will see about like how it flows later. Maybe like saying cursing would like keep the flow better because like later on we'll be using cursing a lot. Uh, we'll see. Uh, okay. Uh, the. Also, one of the thing in Vietnamese that I like, uh, I found like kind of lacking in English is like this kind of uh construct, vody vừa chui, which is like uh, it it feels vody vừa verb vừa verb is basically like you know like doing two things at the same time, is like the uh, vừa vừa uh this is a simultaneity i think by english is also breaking down so like it 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 signifies like parallelity so much better than like whatever is going on in, in english because it's the same word it's the same word to start like both uh uh like to word verb and that depends on the verb that you put on I mean, in front of it will have like different like uh, impact like verdi virtue is like the a very like out of the mouth like smooth uh sentence but if you say virtue verdi it has like a, an up and a, and, da and a down in a sentence and it created a it creates like a different type of meaning just from the rhythm yeah exactly there is a a lot of cool things there are a lot of cool things about like a monosyllabic uh, language because like the rhythm is like a lot like you know you you can have like very very clean rhythm which is why like i don't know how to read uh english uh poetry at all because like the rhythm and like the uh beats and stuff like that just confuse me the whole time because like I don't understand shit about like uh the accents and stuff like that like the, the stress in an English word yeah so like it it just like it does not like really compute for me I also my second language is actually French which also doesn't really have like stress in a word you just say the word from one end to another <laughs> so like when I approach English I already had like both of those like kind of like tap 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 like rhythm like ingrained in me so english just terrifies me the whole time you wouldn't learn more now yeah exactly like uh yeah alex probably that's the reason why i have troubles writing an english sentence that isn't either that isn't either like run on or like full of like bullshit comments Cause like it it feels there's I I still by this point I still haven't like figured out what is like good writing in English and bad writing, cause I like especially like orally like to say out loud. Every uh advice every writing advice is like read your sentence out loud read your uh dialogue out loud how how does it feel how how natural does it feel like they are all lost on me, none of that makes sense to me at all ever. So here you are in my wheelhouse. This is my wheelhouse. I will be driving. Congratulations to all of you. And then like bao giờ cũng thế. I think like the most common way to uh, translate it would be like as usual or like as is it every single time something like that. Oh, I'm 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 developing a list right now. Uh, this this happens a lot whenever I speak English for too long. Uh, it's a very abbre abbreviated like sentence. Like the thing was like 
but like modern Vietnamese is very often you cut out a lot of shit. Like you say that like it's the same way that like you can kind of use like adjective or noun or whatever as a verb in English, as long as like you know like people understand what you're doing, then they like, you you get it. It's fine. Uh, what Vietnamese is more like. You got an object, that's good enough. <laughs> Once again, disclaimer, I'm not a professional translator or, you know, someone who is like super well versed in like the actual rules, as in written rules of uh, the language. I'm just like going off of like my experiences with like translations and stuff like that. So uh, I will probably not have all of the words for y'all. I will probably have to like start pulling up like lesson plans or whatever. Uh, meanwhile, like I'm just gonna try and go on with what I know. I'm very sorry, Alex. I know that you will probably need like an actual like formal lesson later on. Right now, I will probably be confusing you. <laughs> but, like I, I await your success. Uh, bao giờ cũng thế cứ rượu xong là hắn chửi. Uh, I'm tentatively translating this as uh English sentences is built to. The end of the sentence, I flow is, the flow is determined not by word meaning, by the conclusion. You're right, you're right. That makes sense. This will be like interesting, I think, doing this on stream. <laughs> oh, this means a lot. It's, it's gone, a lot is gonna happen. I will say it is what I is, is usual. Uh, like this sentence right here is like missing the verb all entirely. Uh, not the 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 later half of it does have like a verb because like hanju is basically like a, a subject verb like group. Uh, cứ rượu xong. The thing is like, no, no, it's fine. Like I mean, like this is like, it is actually like really good advice that I'm getting from Chad, because like I know like uh, a bunch of our folks are like multilinguals and like a bunch of our folks use english a lot more proficiently than i do <laughs> so i mean like i'm doing this uh like as a stream for a reason i i would like to have help especially because as the further i get into this like re reading vietnamese on screen and say, speaking english out loud is gonna confuse my brain a lot it will get worse <laughs> uh okay this group uh the the cứ là is like one of the uh like sequential uh uh like clauses stuff in in vietnamese cứ là is basically like a, a a condition more like a condition and like a, a sequential thing so cứ is the thing that comes uh in in front of the of the action and la is like the more normal action so basically like uh uh for for example it's like uh Gluen sound basically like the moment you it would be like the moment you finish eating you immediately go to sleep like and it happens every time <coughs> I forget how to speak I'm, I'm forgetting how to speak English right now uh so but like zero sound this specific thing uh one of the ways that would like formalize the sentence for like you know formal Vietnamese would be like adding a verb here because like it was just like a a noun that is like commonly used as verb, so it would be like one here. Uh, but like this specifically is like a, a an informal construct. This is a very informal way of of writing. I would kind of want to preserve that in translation. I will probably have like a lot of problems with like translating the tone of this because like despite this text being like very easy to read it is also like very i will say like on the vulgar side of writing because you know it fits the character and it fits like the story it's right trying to tell and it fits the audience uh and i'm not sure how i would be able to translate that uh that, like tone specifically i would try my best i'm like specifically like indicating with this like this is going to be a draft translation if any like professional translator want to do better or like refine my translation i literally do not have like any problem with that i do not give a shit feel free to use it but like since none of y'all are like doing the work i'm just like starting it out right here 
once again, hit the disclaimer at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so like, cứ xong là hắn chửi would be... God, my handwriting is like the 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 inf like the infernal mix between my my father is it and my mom's my mom has a like very pretty uh slightly illegible uh cursive ha handwriting versus uh my dad's uh extreme chicken scratch shit that only he can read and this is me this is mine uh would be uh Mm. I would say in English it would flow better as I he started S cursing the moment uh the meal's done. No, actually, I don't think we should be using a meal here, because, uh, specifically, Zio was, like, alcohol. Specifically, like, Zio, in general, refers to a meal with alcohol, which, alcohol is the main attraction, the meal is just a side thing. Uh, and Zio is usually used to, like, refer to, like, hanging out with the, the lads. More specifically for that would be Nyo in Vietnamese. Nyo is specifically about drinking alcohol with the last when you eat something to like, like pacify your stomach so you don't like die in the spot or something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about alcohol every time like I'm like 12 or something. I'm, despite everything, alcohol culture is definitely very alien to me. I have like avoided it so far. I do not have uh, a, uh, I do not have any uh, like intention to get into it. Yes, the beer. <laughs> that kind. Of, are there any kinds of beer? I know there are any kinds of beer, but they taste the same to me. It's a piss water. It's fine. The beer. <coughs> you say like, get me a Budweiser and then get fucking laughed out of the bar or something. It's fine. Uh, so we will probably not go for meal. Oh yeah, wine sucks. I fucking hate red wine. I love using red wine in cooking. With cooking, red wine tastes cool. But if you drink it, it just tastes like vinegar. Like worse vinegar. Because I, I can taste the tannin, so it's actually like bitter vinegar. <laughs> I'm one of the bitches who got a tannin tasting gene, baby. Uh, so we will probably not go for the meal. Is there any like equivalent in English that isn't like uh, the high class like wine tasting mm -hmm shit? Uh, I'm thinking about it. Currently, I'm hit like uh, I'm I'm keeping it here. We'll we'll have to like go through this pretty fast. Snacks. I don't think they <laughs> implied alcohol in snacks. It's specifically about alcohol because she felt so drunk. He is like, you know, a, 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 an alcohol addict. That's his drug, literally. This, this makes it, I, I kind of, actually, I do kind of want to move on to the first sentences a little bit because like the rest of this paragraph is really excellent. Like, but no, Hunty Joy, which means like at the start, he's, he's like, at first he swears as a sky. Có hề gì? Trời có cuộc riêng nhà nào? Có hề gì? Like, I guess like, it's, I would transliterate it as what's the matter, but what's the matter is like, it implies concern in a, in, in a way. Có hề gì? It's more like, you know, brushing aside that concern. Like, uh, I'm pro I will probably have to like write all of that down. Uh, in this, like a flow to see how like how it works. now meaning uh the sky doesn't belong to uh any specific household or any specific person. Uh, it is a common thing to refer to like a person or you know a, a group of people or whatever as like yeah something. 
uh, even though like nhà, uh, the literal meaning of it would be a household or like a house. It is the the language is built around like the concept of a house or like a home. The whole thing from top to bottom. You always like you know you go with the family. You have a family and you represent a family all the time. I'm I'm not bitter about this. <laughs> Uh, the sky doesn't belong to anyone, but like this is for uh, this is for uh, uh, written as a uh, question. I want to keep that. It I might not. I want to. Uh, make note here. Uh, yeah. Uh, next uh, is rồi hắn chửi đời. I would be like cursing at life. He. And then he started cursing at life. Fuck yeah, I do. <laughs> God, maybe translators and comic artists like shaking hands on this one, making notes on the like on a margin of sketches and scraps. Good God, where would we be without that? Where would we we be without marginalias? Like he, and then he started cursing at life, and then thấy cũng chẳng sao. Like this, these two có hề gì anh thấy cũng chẳng sao. Like that is like a uh, is like a a bridge of meaning. Like I would like for those to have the same tone. Hope I can read this. Uh, đời là tất cả nhưng chẳng là ai. This is gonna be very weird to read in English, I think. Just like the the concept of life. Transliterate this would mean uh life is everything but nothing at the same time or more since this use I which is specific for humans or like a person uh later on then like I would kind of assume that tất cả also refers to uh humans. So more like life is and everybody and nobody at the same time. It would mostly mean that like you know, swearing at life in general would obviously like you know negate the the targeting of literally any individual because you know it's ultimately it does not point to anybody specifically. So I might stick with life for the. Uh, I might find a better alternative later, cause like life, I feel like I don't know, doesn't feel like one on one enough. Obviously, translation is not about one on one, but like the vibes of life, I feel like doesn't really fit with like the the kind of like like the hand wavy kind of vibe that goes with like the word doi. Like Choi and Doi are like two two most common uh deities to swear at in Vietnamese. Choi is like the sky, you know, like the omnipresent the the omnipresence of like you know things concepts like fate and stuff like that. Look at the squares, look at the sky squares and, and swear the sky. That happens, and then Doi is just like is like the. The the. The action of separating you from like other people and like other people making up like as a as a whole life versus you who is subjected to it, <laughs> which is like a very I think like that's a very that's sure is a way to like characterize you fail as far as I know. This is also this is why I'm doing like the translation on uh, on stream because like like talking through this is y'all like. Forcing me to think about a text as well. It's, it's good. It's a good time for me. Uh, Tức Minh. Tức Minh is like a very a common way to say that like he's getting angry. Hell yeah. I, I hope y'all are having fun. How fucking long have I been uh, alive now? I don't even have like my stream on so I can't actually see it. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I... 
I hope, I hope y'all are learning. I'm learning. I'm sure learning something. Uh, tức mình is a common way to just say bực mình or tức mình. Like, basically, uh, uh, interchangeable, except for bực, uh, it's like a downswing of the, uh, of the sense, and then tức would be like, and tức would be like going up. So like, it just depends on like the things you're writing and how well it flows. But then those two are interchangeable to mean like you are getting angry or like annoyed. Angry and annoyed at the same time is more like the the, the thing that like book would they signifies. That would be like actual angriness. Like prolonged anger and like, you know, intense anger. Or like, you know, specifically anger. But like tuk or like book would mean like anger and annoyance. That's like usually how I use it. A lot of, I think a lot of people don't think that hard about it. <laughs> uh, I would like prefer annoyance here actually. Because I feel like annoyance leads to anger rather than, rather than like the other way. So if I bring like, so I keep annoyance in here then like the anger can be like assumed. Instead of like, if I just translate this as angry then you know the annoyance would be lost. So, I want to say this is annoyed. Tức mình hắn chửi nghe tất cả làng vũ đại. He's zoning in. Hell yeah. Hắn chửi nghe tất cả làng vũ đại. Uh, he's, he's choosing his target now. He's uh, honing in from đời, which is just life in general. Or like... The, the state of people living around him to uh cả lãng đại which means like specifically his uh village which is which is named Vũ Đại Vũ Đại is like the name of his village the village he lives in so like and chửi nghe uh obviously like I don't think I how much can I like privatize uh, no no why 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 did i use that word that's not the right word uh how can i how do i like what's the how much like words can i put in this like specific uh turn of word because like the chửi ngay is like this it it signifies that the chỉ fell this person is uh free with his word not not just specifically his word but with like this the the yelling and the cursing the you know the bad word i'm I'm doing air court y'all can probably see me do air court now uh like he's like ready with the the, the violence both in worth and you know in in uh in in, in action doing uh because like chửi ngay would be like you know obviously like chửi ngay is basically immediately ngay is basically like it happens the moment like the other the other thing the condition happens uh so you writing it this way basically means that like the moment he feels a negative emotion him yeah you you're right snap is like the right word but i i wanted to keep like the cursing but i think we can snip like, we can like skip this because this is like a kind of uh like change of scope for what he's doing a little bit god i'm gonna i'm gonna have to credit all of y'all in in this draft translation thank you for keeping me company with this uh so like this the way of right the way this sentence is written basically means that like the moment this character feels like any negative emotion he immediately lets it out like he is not at the moment we we learn that he does not like he does not hesitate in like like dealing damage to other people that's that's such a like giveaway way to say it is he does not like hesitate to hurt other people or like you know to commit violence with his words and like kind of, we can kind of assume that he would do the same with like action Nhưng cả làng vũ đại cũng như chắc nó trừ mình ra. This is... God, this... 
actually this first paragraph is like pretty fucking perfect as far as like first paragraph though also i need to change my uh no actually i just need to loop this um okay well uh this this first paragraph is really good actually uh, the more you read into it, the more it is, the better it is, actually. <laughs> so, like, effortly, he scrolls through the pages of the paper. So, like, he swears loud enough for everyone in the village to hear him. Which is why, like, the entirety of the village is reacting to him. Oh, hello, Mimi. Welcome to stream. Hello, Mira. Uh, we are translating Chi Fiao and Amgao right now, and we are still at the first paragraph because there is a lot of this text. Despite everything, this text is, this text is a very thick, very dense text, and uh, the fact that I'm like trying to contextualize everything in English will probably prolong this like through the year for me. This will be a lot. Hell yeah, you got to start right. Hello, Alex is also back. We got the crew here. Uh, I'm like to the uh, middle of uh, the first paragraph right now. There are a lot of walls of text here, except for like the uh, the uh, dialogues, because uh, people don't know about the uh, line break back then. So like, tức mình hắn chửi ngay cả làng vũ đại, nhưng cả làng vũ đại ai cũng nhủ chắc nó trừ mình ra. So like, he was swearing at the he was swearing at the whole uh of his village because uh he swore at the sky and he swore at life in general and none of those given that they are just like you know a general concept uh answered him at all like none of those reacted so like he got annoyed and he swore at like everyone in the village but apparently the whole village can hear him because he just swears that loudly and very targeted <laughs> But uh, they uh, think to themselves, so like Kalamuda, I cũng nhủ chắc nó trừ mình ra. They think to themselves that he's excluding them exactly, that their their specific person from the the people he is swearing at. Literally, chắc nó trừ mình ra means he's probably excluding me. He probably doesn't count me in. I think like this is something that I can be like I can I can translate like pretty colloquially because like the same sentiment is like it's not about me in English rather than like you know he's excluding me as in like that specific uh uh like sentence in Vietnamese. And honestly I think like the channel to me that is from this thing. Like, it's from this short story. It is like a Vietnamese literature canon for the reason. It genuinely like influenced the language a lot. It's a pillar. But the whole of uh Vu Dai Village thought Chak Na Chu Ming Zha would be uh uh he's not talking about me. Or like swearing at me. There. Uh, so, không ai So nobody answered. This is also a thing with like the style of writing. Uh, the Nam Gao style of writing is he writes a lot more vulgarly and a lot more like a lot less like flowerly. Like and he, despite like these walls of text, he is not like a purple prose kind of writer. He. A lot of his sentences have like very clear rhythm and like it's very choppy. Like it does end up like feeling like, choppy in one way or another, in 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 a few uh, in, in like places. Specifically because the rest of the text are like in the fucking wall. But like it contrasts very like clearly with another, uh, like a, a number of other, like writers of like his same uh, generation. Uh, Vu Bang is known for writing like very like writing prose poetry basically about food uh 
and uh, take lamb is practically like a, a teen uh like it take lamb like compared to 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 nam gao would be like basically like a teen romance writer because <laughs> take lamb goes so take, take lamb is like so much about like the ghibli kind of like sensibility that is like but like at, at the same time it's not exactly like comparable like that it's just like you know it's Sometimes I read Teclam's writing and feels like kind of trite. I don't like. I don't really like Teclam. You can probably tell from what I'm I'm talking about. I don't really like his writing. Mostly because he have, as you guys have uh, remarked on, this is more my type of writing. Uh, like, and you know, I I got a good stuff. Why do I like go for the other thing? Also, Teclam don't really like. At this specific point in time, writing the way Thick Lam write feels uh kind of yikes. I'm not gonna lie, cause like the rest of them are like you know dying and shit. For my name, Tianka means like nobody res responded. I think I will keep like respond. Lin Tiang is basically like you know champ, uh, champ, you know like pipe up. Uh, so like it's not exactly like about responding to uh, she feels uh swearing here. It's just like nobody reacts at all. Uh, but maybe I could I would be honing on uh honing in on the specific like responding to keep with the thread of like the earlier thing. To like make that uh to like make that thread clearer. Uh, there the third. Yeah, basically, yeah, don't, don't, don't fucking, like, don't talk to him, I don't know the shit, but exactly like that. But, you know, uh, actually, I, I like that idea, because, like, this whole story is about, like, personhood. This whole story is about, like, you know, personhood and being a good person and how that's taken away from people. So, like, the thing, the, the thing with people is that, like, sometimes there, there's that, like, uh, school thinking I don't actually remember which one but like you're only a person if you're un around other people you know like you 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 a person who needs to be like recognized to exist like you know people have to treat you like a person and that includes acknowledging you not just like responding to what you say or whatever but like you know recognizing that you uh like occupy space and you know re reacting to that even like you know at a baseline level so like acknowledgement is actually like I, I like that idea. So I'm gonna I'm gonna note it down. I'm gonna have to work through it around it on uh the trap in here. Yeah. So yeah, I, you know, once again, I'm glad that I got people who actually speak English in the chat. So I can bounce ideas out of y'all and I'm like, well, I'm trying to like corner this translation into being. basically is, oh, this whole group is like an escalation of the anger. Uh, is. It's weird because the English doesn't really have like the, the kind of exclamation that it's just like, you know, you're saying what you say what you're feeling out loud or something like that. It's always like onomatopoeia, or, like arg or like ugh or something like that. You, I can't really say that like, you know, I'm angry and then like exclamation point, you call that like an ex like, <laughs> exclamation that's, that feels weird. But like, in, in Vietnamese, we do say that. Usually it's said in a less like curt way or like you add like, you know, swearing and stuff to like lengthen the sentence into something that's more rhythmic. So like basically if I'm angry, I can say it. So like the, the actual content of sentence would just be took and then the rest of them would just be embellishment to make it like a, an exclamation, you know. It's uh, like it's, it's a cool thing to do, but I don't know how to translate this. <laughs> Uh, mm, I might have to restructure this whole thing. That seems like the the yeah. I I might have to like restructure this whole thing. Uh, 
you know what would be a cool thing to do? Fucking numbering the uh the line. I will probably start doing that the next uh page to keep it consistent. Uh, I can start numbering the lines and I can refer to the lines in like my notes instead of uh, writing like here and not being able to read it later. Uh... Uh, to God, I'm I'm fucking catapult back into my fucking lit years, in in book school right now. Uh, this would be like this. Oh, it's like this is definitely like a quirk of uh, like uh, western westernization of the language, because like. We don't usually say oh like that. Actually like for like exclam Yeah. Uh, it's for exclamation. We actually don't use onomatopoeia a lot or like just like I guess like the uh exclamation sound something like that. We don't really use that a lot. Usually we just use words. Or we just swear. <laughs> the most common way to to excl uh, to to like, you know, like uh do like an, an exclamation or something like that is to say did mate which is just basically fuck <laughs> you just say fuck you, like if you if you are angry in vietnamese you usually just say fuck that is normal i think <laughs> uh yeah since i will probably be bringing it up later in this like so far in here, like later on, there will be like holding you on this as well. So, the polite angry tone. Uh, we don't. If if you are polite, you don't get angry. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> we we don't. If we feel angry and we are having to be polite, we just swallow it down and we swear later. In a in the setting of politeness, you don't fucking get angry. <laughs> that is the thing with Vietnamese, and that is the thing with, I think, like, a lot of Southeast Asian, like, cultures in general. You don't fucking get angry when you are, like, having to polite, because, like, specifically you are polite to people in, a, of, uh, people in positions of authority who are, uh, you know, who, who are responsible for your life, who, who can kill you when they want like historically or you are polite to your elders or people who are like you know higher than you in the family hierarchy which is like you know your aunt, your aunts your uncles your grandpas your cousins who are like older than you and uh to those people you also don't get angry like i'm not i'm not i'm not bitter about this at all don't don't worry about it don't don't worry about it we, we don't talk about that it just this reminds me of the of of, of that two part series uh by uh that one youtuber who compiled like opinions and uh presentations from uh their uh discourse server of like Southeast Asian people tearing into their uh, like yeah yeah it reminds me of that you should go watch it it's good it's also very educational uh not uh, not unlike what we're doing here uh uh so if he did that i would like restructure this uh yep you simply do not make, like you know mention that you're angry uh if you disagree with uh people you like you know you you worth that you do work that, but like, I I guess I also like the thing I do when I get angry when my parents or something like that would be like, to get like, exaggeratedly formal because like between families members you you aren't formal, like you are like respectful as in like you refer to them with the right uh pronouns and like the right like because the pronouns here 
uh, the second uh, person pronoun also uh, one contain gender if you do it in the family way and also uh, to uh, contain like hi hierarchical like information so do you ref when you refer to someone who's a lot older than you yeah honorific kind of not exactly because we don't really use that just as like like a Jap like Japanese honorific or something like that, like you tag it to the name, you also use that as just pronouns in general. So for example, if you refer to a man who is a lot older than you and you uh, uh, respect, you would say um, and like you would just refer, use that as like you, like like the pronouns you in a sentence. Like um, um, ni bezo ya, um, uh, uh, ya, uh, just like that. Uh, and like that specifically refers to it, it is referring to them with that pronouns means that like like it implies respect it implies like an a, an hierarchy where like you are like you know below them kind of yeah it is a way uh if you don't respect them you don't say it that way it that is also okay but most people do it because it's polite uh uh, yeah, it's like respectful, but it is not actually like formal. Formal, uh, what we consider formal in Vietnamese, uh, is like different from uh respectful. I will say, uh, respectful. You you can be respectful while being like totally like informal, uh, but like formality is uh reserved for like administrative work or like to people who you working with or like people who you don't know very well, like strangers and stuff like that. So like if I'm angry with a parent or something like that, I would get like weirdly formal with that. <laughs> like I would word my sentence in a, a more like westernized way. I would like my sentences would get longer <laughs> and probably harder to parse. And I will start using like weird westernized word. <laughs> that is like the way that I uh I show my anger if I do feel if I do let my anger be felt when I'm talking to my parents. But like otherwise, like in the context of like the language, we don't have that really. So like yeah, it also like a way to immediately frame this person, the, the main character, as like you know a thug or something like that is you know bad language. He's, uh, he swears, he, uh, not swears, like, everyone in this village swears, everybody fucking swears in a normal sentence, but, like, you have to be a prolific swearer, you have to be, like, someone who has, like, songs and stuff that is just nasty swearing, you have poems that is just swearing, you have to swear in rhyme, you have to swear, with like you have to like put words together in a way that nobody has ever heard before and they have to be impressed it is an art here it is like you know obviously like the duality of like class and you know actual uh, goodness like you perceive people of higher class who don't swear a lot as like better people or something like that but at the same time like normal people who you know understand that those things uh don't really mean shit in the end you you you're impressed by those people <laughs> i know my parents like my mom has a, a a childhood friend who can swear like that who can on the spot make up like a, a whole like i think uh what we call like diovan or like basically like a a fucking what's the word the, the the text you read when uh someone died and you were at their you were asked to uh speak at their funeral or something like that it's just like that whole text of swearing like genuinely like eulogy yeah a eulogy it is an art i will say it is an art <laughs> We're coming back to the text. It is good. It is very good. Basically, uh, from the top down, you can kind of see already that, like, you know, there are things that there are like uh, standards and stuff that are set by people in power to 
make the tattoo that is like still infused in the text to make you consider this main character as like a to, to make you consider this character as like a villain like it's a lot of these things are swearing is like top down because like fucking everyone swears <laughs> it's literally a normal part of work this is like Ocon says, Tức chết đi được mất, which I kind of want to keep here instead of like restructuring. Tức chết đi được mất is like... It is like a normal way to speak. Oh fuck, I keep touching the mic, sorry. Uh, chết đi được mất is like a way to speak it, a normal kind of expression in Vietnamese. Like, chết đi được mất would be like... Uh, translated to... Transliterated to... Uh, to death, well, so like... Chết đi được mất, tức chết đi được mất would be like He's so angry he could die right here Basically right, basically that Which is like a part of the, like, like you, you can basically Tap like chết đi được mất on basically anything Or you can, yeah <laughs> It's not would be a really funny type way to say it, I think Uh, like the Chết, chết đi được mất or you can abbreviate it, it to like chết được you can tag it on literally any anything like uh and any type of adjective possible in Vietnam in Vietnamese. So uh like you can say it even about a thing that are like good or something like that. Like uh you can say like sung chedi được, which is like a, an exclamation. It usually is used like slightly sarcastically to say that like you're you're so happy or like you're so like you live in such in such luxury that you can die right here. <laughs> so like it's like it's it's just a normal way to say things. Like it this specifically chat do that that thing is very common in like parlay in, in, in like just like no common uh language. So uh I I would like to keep that somehow. Or like I I would like but like I still would like to keep like the, the connotation of Chedi Duk Mat, which is like I know it's not it's not like actually like a big deal in Vietnamese because like it's just an expression really. But I like that like I, I, I like that like it's like implication that like she feel feels things like this like this like deeply, you know? Like the way that his anger escalates and like it escalates so fast. Just like he finished drinking and like he start feeling annoyed at his life and he start like swearing and like it just keeps escalating and like the fact that like it feels out of nowhere and it it kind of implies you know the the fact that like there are uh deeper infrastructure in, in place to keep him that way i I like that its implication so I would like to keep it I'm gonna make note here. Uh, okay, I'm actually, I'm gonna stand up right now for a little bit. Feel free to review what we got right here. I, I don't know how to keep this thing open, like, properly, because uh, it is a very new book, so, like, the spine still stiff. Yeah, uh, feel free to review what we got right here. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up for a hot second, and, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be back later. I'm, I'm taking something into the room with me. Wait here. Oh, did it fucking don't do that? Did it fucking unplug? Okay, here. Yeah. It didn't switch. Hold on a second. I'm gonna be back.
Oh fuck. Plate is gone. Oh no. Have a good night, Plate. <laughs> I I am back. I got my freaking ding. Night blade. Return of the frog. I am back. Uh, uh, where were we? We've just got to the Jedi Nugmat, I think. Yeah. Uh, so we are keeping the Jedi Nugmat specifically. Uh, which is like me trying to find like a uh a Good way to like indicate the the depth of his anger, and like the way that you feel anger is like you know implying that the way you feel anger this deeply is like by feeling it like chronically, like an anger that has not been resolved for a long, long time. Uh, the next part that he had to chat it up to now we had. I just fucking love this opening paragraph. Uh, that hair is like a, uh, I can guess kind of a condition clause, like the response clause to the condition clause. Uh, that hair is basically like, so, so that's how it's be how, so I will go, so I will do this. It's like specifically like a, a, a response to like something that you, you know, you feel is like a slight against you. Hắn phải chửi cha được đâu không chửi nhau với hắn means uh uh he will uh now curse out the people who uh like who refuse to uh to curse him out like in response to him cursing them out like, early on fucking I need to like abbreviate this fucking sentence in my brain somehow. Uh, I think it would be like don't the people who don't let him pick a fight with them. Uh, specifically to Cha. That's the thing. Like, uh, usually when you curse someone out in Vietnamese, you curse their parents out, you curse their mom out, their dad out, their uh grandparents out, or like their great grandparents out. Uh. You 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 basically curse their their family around them. Uh. Uh. So there there are a, a number of ways you can do that. It's like it's just a thing that is like implied. You don't even like you know, you don't even do it like consciously. You don't really mean it that way. Like, common day now when you curse someone like did my my or something like that, it means like fuck you, like it kind of bypasses the, the layer that is like about their mom <laughs> you don't we don't really think about that except to like make jokes about it in common parlance uh but like uh it is like a nuance that i feel like if we bypass it would just like be lost entirely in the translation god this this whole uh short story is just gonna be like the seven layers of cursing. <laughs> you will learn all about swear words in Vietnamese with me on this journey. Uh, uh, that hey is like it's just like an if cause like to to. To link the previous uh, part with this sentence, I mean, to make that whole previous part like the if if clause, uh, but like this is like a very confrontational way of using it. Uh, I will figure it out as I go. I will put in like a uh, placeholder probably. Uh, like nobody's still responding to him. Like, I think this would flow better in English. Would be cut out the but here. Nhưng is basically but. Uh, I'm just like still because like there's actually there's that word in English. Still is like already implied a but in there. 
That, that's a cool word. I'll keep it. Uh, sometimes, like, uh, the shorter sentence in English, or, like, the, the more compressed sentence in English, seems a bit less, uh, uh, freaking, uh, accessible. Somehow. Mostly because, like, English is... <laughs> When you compress a sentence in English, usually it means like, you know, like it requires a kind of context for a few words that like not everybody has. Sometimes when you know the the subject matter is brief and you keep it brief, that's normal. But sometimes when like it implies a lot of things and like you you like press it to to find shorter word to put together in English to make the sentence shorter. Like you compress them, like you compress the sentence that way. Sometimes it becomes like either like poetic or academic in a way. That is like it feels less accessible somehow. Especially with word use, I think. It's gonna be balancing between word use and like sentence length in this one. Makeup, makeup is. I I will say that like from my reading of it, is like basically saying like uh saying saying like it made to a life. Yep, is same basically same as the in a way. Yep is like stress in in the the literal meaning of yep would be like your current life, as in like the the in the reincarnation like Buddhism way, as in like. Uh, a previous life would would be called Gyeopjeop, or like the uh, the life uh, you will be living after this one would be Gyeopsao. So like Gyeop is specifically a reincarnation of you, but usually it's mean it's just used to mean life. So like Gyeop is like a lighter version, kind of of like the the common like swearing, which is like uh it's just it's like even though it's I it's uh less targeted as in like you don't really have like a a, a subject to that an object to that sentence you don't really aim it at anyone it feels stronger than like make gear which is like you know just swearing at life in general uh in my brain like if like it may uh, is uh, um, amounts to fuck basically then like make gear would amount to like damn or something like that or shit like a, a more like mundane uh swearing a lot not a lot of people swear this way anymore i used to when it was a, a child which is really funny because <laughs> like it still has like all of the uh implied uh swearing at your family member thing it's not really like less in terms of like vulgarity it's just less targeted in some way it just feels less grave but also it makes you feel like a fucking like a, an ant or like a, a a grandma or something. This is a very old fashioned swearing. You don't really hear it nowadays anymore. People just say fuck. They just say it made. It's normal. Uh, so I'm gonna say this is like uh, damn. Noting that down. Thing they just lost. <laughs> they just missed out on. A, a lesson about like swearing in Vietnamese, I guess. <laughs> God, aren't you guys? Aren't you guys glad you're here? Uh, next part. Thế thì có phí rượu không? Thế thì nó có khổ hắn không? This man, yeah. This like it's this first paragraph really is like a very perfect like uh, escalation, escalation. That's the word. Escalation of like the the feeling of this main character. Like, he just gets, like, angry and angry and angrier and, like, it tips into, like, a kind of misery. That is, like, it's, like, so intense, so permeating. That, like, it, it ends up, like, being slightly ridiculous. You'd, like, as Anime Charles, like, you will see, it's, like, it's, it's cool and also very sad also really funny. I like it. Teddy uh, Coffee basically means, uh... Wouldn't that be a waste of alcohol? 
that like he's swearing uh, at people and nobody's swearing at back at him. <laughs> nobody's he's picking a fight, but nobody's like accepting it. Nobody's taking a threat from him. Take a few photos. Uh, this I feel like would benefit from being like an, an exclamation instead of uh, a question in English, because like. I feel like the the, the uh, spirit of the sentence would be better translated as like what a waste of alcohol rather than like isn't that a waste of alcohol because uh, a lot of uh, exclamations and stuff like that in Vietnamese are, are actually under the form of rhetorical questions. It I, I think it is like a part of the lyricality or like the musicality of uh, of a language. Because, like, uh, when you word it this way, like, you have to up and down in the sentence. You have, like, the, the, uh, like, you know, the, the slide up at the end of the sentence to imply, uh, the, the question. You have, like, uh, the, the, the lamenting kind of vibes of it. A lot of, like, the, the swearing and shit does have... In here, like they do happen in a in a question instead of, uh, of uh the uh of an exclamation. Also, fucking good point, Alex. Was it what a waste of alcohol is almost dehumanizing as well because it removes the subject from action happening. You're correct. That's cool. That's actually cool. It works. You know what? We are fucking geniuses. Uh. Hell yeah. I'm noting it down. There you go. If we are fucking geniuses, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I got y'all here. Uh the next part is like a whole tirade. Like it these these are all like very like fast moving notes of uh logics that flow really well in Vietnamese that like but also like it's so smooth that you're you don't recognize that you're crashing which is like a vibe of this I think. Hell yeah. I I like that idea. I, I'm gonna note it down, Alex. Thank you. Cause like, I, I feel like. <laughs> Oof. Uh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> face, face. <laughs> We got fucking language mishap and in in the chat today, which is like it's specifically it's extremely on point for the stream. <laughs> I like it. Uh, uh, remove subject. Uh, motions. Uh, to the point up until uh the like like god that that would be like a very cool uh like translation choice if anybody picks up on it like he getting like dehumanized until the point where he lost like the the chance at like experiencing love or like a, 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 like the even the slight dream of having like a normal life with a family and stuff like that and realizing that like he has like has not been a person for a while like at that point he started like coming back into like his experience this is a very tragic text it is also a very important text i think so we are doing this uh this whole tirade like Thế thì có phí rượu không? Thế thì nó có khổ hắn không? Không biết đứa nào, đứa chết mẹ nào lại để dân thân hắn cho 
cho hắn khổ đến nông nỗi này it's like basically it's just like a, just what what we would call in Vietnamese like a gong thoi like which is like the 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 tool you use to weave uh like a, a piece of fabric like the the piece of wood that you like tie the uh thread to to like uh like to to push between like the the vertical thread and, like we call it that because like if you are like a, a professional like a, a a quality a weaver that that tool would be moving very fast and in like a very straight line so like basically we call something like we we if we uh compare something to that tool like something basically if there is like the 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 new high speed train and stuff like that we do call that the toy which is like you know it moves fast and it like it gets there very fast so then when i'm thinking about like the the way the logic in here work also works in the same way it's just like it's so fast it's so smooth that you don't recognize like where you're going so like the thing is thế thì có phí diệu không thì nó có khổ hắn không không biết đứa trên mẹ nào lại để được thân hắn cho hắn khổ đến nông nỗi này it's like this start uh what a waste of uh alcohol thế nó có khổ hắn không uh would be transliterated to uh basically like what was he uh the the uh the sentence i structure here is like mirror like parallel to keep the rhythm going to like push you into the logic without you like noticing it uh không biết thế thì có khổ hắn không có gì lại uh, khổ is specifically about misery it's not exactly pain like i i think maybe i've just got conditioned by like uh, les misérables in Vietnamese uh, translate would be like những người khốn khổ. It used it used to be translated to a different word that that had its meaning changed into like a more negative connotation later on, and they had to fix that, which is really funny. Like the the first draft was translated as những người khốn nạn, and the word khốn nạn now means like a fucking wretch. <laughs> Oh yeah, the wooden tool to like weave the horizontal, the horizontal thread like between the vertical thread. Không biết thế chứng. Uh, thế thì có khổ hắn không? Uh, they. I would like to uh keep the mirroring of the sentence structure. I hope that works the same way in English as they like to to push you along with the logic like that. Uh, so what what a waste of alcohol. What a uh it would be like I I was thinking about like what a pain in his ass, but that would be like keeping it a bit too light because like, he is getting into like fucking unknown misery right now over something that is. That seems to be like nothing, which like uh, hashtag high five uh, extreme millennial or something something, uh, but like we have all had like you know from the moments of breaking the fuck down over like some bullshit stupid things like fucking breaking like a dish or something like that, breaking a plate on the floor or, like accidentally pouring water in the wrong vessel or something. Just like you know, a top of the pile of misery, but uh, you don't recognize it. Like this irrationality, I I like it. Uh, thế nào có khổ hẳn không? Uh, it's weird that the word pain in English has been like on uh, such a sliding scale. Oh, I'm gonna check that. I think the warp is like the word here. 
Oh no, it's like a set of yarn on all the things stretching the plates on the loom. So why is it introduced? Okay, the rough is the uh horizontal uh is the vertical line, the so weft is the horizontal line, apparently. Uh I'm gonna actually I'm gonna try and look this up on uh uh like Vietnamese uh Wikipedia and then try to see if there is Uh, like a, a like a, a like English version of that article or something. Nope, there is no English word for that. Apparently, there is just no English word for that. I do not see it. Like there is like the word for loom obviously, but like the the tool is is weird that there's like no word for the tool actually. I might have to look again for it later in like the specific communities. Uh, yeah, currently we do have to like keep on with this translation. Damn, I think it would've been in here like over an hour or something. This such a translation. Uh, thì có khổ, nó có khổ hay không? I would say miserable existence. Like to keep the. Like uh, the uh, mirroring of the uh, structure uh, and like the drama of it, the perceived drama of it. Because like this is genuinely like very dramatic if you read it out in, in Vietnamese, it's like it feels like this dude is making like so fucking much fuss over nothing. Especially like you know about like finishing his fucking alcohol. So like the the drama uh factor here, I think like can be kept with the miserable. The word miserable feels like one of the words that he would know, even if it's like a bigger one. Uh, when they're miserable. Không biết được trên mẹ nọ, không biết được trên mẹ nọ để nó thành hành thành này. It was like the the end point of this like the, this train of logic, which is uh uh this translates to. Who, uh, who gave birth to him so he could live a fucking miserable life like this? Co like compiled with a number of different swears, obviously. Uh, Chidme would be one of those swears. Chidme is also one that I use a lot, but like definitely in a less uh, severe context than this. Chidme is like. Uh, this is the uh, sub superlative, I guess, is an English word. It's like superlative, uh, chet, like, din chet, or like, uh, chet được or chet me. It's just like the chet is the word meaning death or die. So, like, you know, it's just like the, the, the very dramatic superlative of Vietnamese, which is uh, uh, something to death, doing something to death, feeling something to the point of dying, something like that, but like. As the usual in the language, you don't target it as the person directly or uh, any person directly. Usually, uh, you target it at their family or their mom. <laughs> so you do have a chit bo, chit me, chit ba, chit ko. You know the whole family. You you can do that with everyone. Oh, with the head off? Oh hell yeah! Cool, cool to know. Uh. I'm gonna write it down here. It doesn't really have anything to do with translation. I just like keeping it around to like maybe talk about like the way that the chain of logic work later. I'm so glad English doesn't have like gendered word actually because 
I remember learning vo uh, vocabulary in French and having like to have the middle column being fucking packed full of like no uh, masculine or like no femina or something like that. Horrible, and I have to remember it every time too. Yeah, that's the word. Thank you, thank you, Alex. We got the word for our metaphor. Uh, <clears throat> so like. I think like the 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 general gravity of Jinmei in here would just be like just basically same fuck really I think just like uh this is just like who the fuck like who the fuck give birth to him so he could live like a wretch like this. Oh, no 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 it's like. The thing is like oh, đến nông nỗi này, đến nông nỗi này is like a word that is specified, is like an expression that, says, that specifies like escalation. As in like, basically like, you know, like you're hungry, you're like, you're this hungry, you know, it's, it's like that. But of course it's like longer because like it's a, it's a drama, but it is a very like drama kind of expression uh you can also use this independently actually like làm gì để mà đến mức này đến nông nỗi này nông nỗi này Bis there's i just realized there's a shorter word for shorter version of this would be like đến mức này mức is just like the level so like transliterated đến mức này would be uh to this level but it's just like a a, a very informal way of saying like how, why did you live it until this point or like something like that it's like làm gì để đến mức này which is you know that, it's like that but like it's it's definitely less for uh, less formal than the way that it sounds in english it's just an expression here uh so like specifically about like this this would like be the main character she fell acknowledging or like you know perceiving that like this is like the height of fucking misery for him. Like, like, and and specifically because like, đến nông nỗi này, đến mức này, those are like escalation, but also they kind of acknowledge somewhat that like you're missing the escalation point, like the the point of escalation. Like, basically, usually when you use this, you don't know how the fuck it got here. Like, uh. I'm I'm trying to walk around this. I'm hmm. like either it's unearned, like you did nothing, but you still this still happened to you, so you did use this expression specifically, or like you don't know what happened in the middle to make it this way. It's like a very specific vibe. I I and I also like again like the escalation. So I want to keep it, but I'm not sure if I can. Sometimes it do we like that. Like yeah. Honestly, I, I would say even more dramatic than most me, maybe. Or maybe less not exactly less dramatic, but more like the emotion specifically anger. <laughs> Woe is me is like when you're crying. And when you say the no no no, usually you are fucking angry. You are also sad. You are also miserable, but you are also very fucking angry. You use this usually to like chew out someone for like fucking leaving their affairs unattended so long that it like grew leg and walked away. Uh. So like COVID. <laughs> you fuck kind of yeah. Are you fucking serious with like the the incredulous uh uh um, effect is actually like on on the negative side as in like you're, you're incredulous as yeah it's this is a lot i i don't think there is like an, an one 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 analogous like expression in english anyway so we'll be like having to walk around it a little bit hell yeah like do what you must <clears throat> Uh, would be like, who the fuck? Uh, gave birth to him. 
I, you know, I like the. I guess a give birth, give birth to somebody is like a, a very graphic kind of like expression. I think. Uh. I don't know. Honestly, is there anything like that in English other than giving birth to something? <laughs> Hello, Alex. Welcome back. Are you shitting me? You know what? Yeah, <laughs> kinda. Yeah. I think just that uh, are you shitting me is more like uh, independent. That's it. Um, because like this, the no no nay usually you yeah, you tag it onto like the end of a sentence or like the a verb or something. It kind of implied that you did something or whatever, or somebody did something to you. Mm. There will be many words written about this fucking like, uh, the, the expression. I think I'm, I am so not like a, uh, I'm so not an actual translator or like a literature teacher or anyone who actually knows shit. <laughs> we are just working around things. The whole like hope the chat right now is just such a like drama. But I think like the word like the 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 way we say who the fuck or what the fuck in in English like has the same kind of drama. If it's a little bit more brief, we are having fun with language. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh, okay, but to him. Cho hắn khổ đến nụ cái này để ra thân hắn. These are like expressions that I I maybe would like, like because like cho hắn khổ đến nụ cái này. I feel like it's gonna take up like the length of this whole sentence, so we can like skim on the first part a little bit. The drama will not be lessened. You make him such a miserable wretch. I like this actually. Be using the big word to tie the. Uh, oh, would that be something that I can. Mm. This is a exclamation. Is an exclamation. In Vietnamese, versus the two first one being uh, questions, rhetorical questions, but like questions nonetheless. What we're doing right now with the translation is like the first ones, the first two are the first two are uh, exclamations, versus the la the later one. I'm I'm thinking about making it a question because like we have the right uh, making of a question right here. But also, would that like? I feel like maybe keeping it like and keeping the same structure, but with an exclamation point, would keep it like tighter. Because like, it is an escalation. Uh, it's an escal escal escalation. No, like if you s read this in Vietnamese, you would be like, you know, question, and then you question again, you raise it up, and then like by the by the exclamation mark, you are like screaming, and like it is like the. The like the chop at the end, you know, <laughs> because like next part, aha, it's basically a eureka, you know. So apparently, like to him, this is like the the answer to like the this is goal of a day. So maybe I was I actually would keep this <clears throat> with an exclamation point and like with the drama of the the longest fucking sentence to uh compensate <clears throat> and then aha. I would keep this. I think like there's nothing wrong with this one. <laughs> you you know what this is, but like with like the uh dash in the middle. Exactly like the the, the type of aha you hear in like uh fucking Zoro or whatever. The next part is the the conclusion to his whole fucking lament up until now. Phải đây hắn cứ thế mà chửi. 
hắn chửi hắn cứ chửi đứa chết mẹ nào để ra thân hắn để ra cái thằng chí pèo this is the first time you hear the their character names in the uh, in the uh, uh, opening paragraph phải đấy uh, probably the best way to translate this will be like that's right it's just like the same as that's right really hắn cứ thế mà chửi it's like he has not stopped fucking swearing even like from the moment he started so like he was like swearing out this whole fucking like he he was working out his this this fucking a knot in his uh judgment uh by screaming it out loud this whole time uh like this is a continuous state of fucking swear it was just swearing I would say that he kept on swearing. Not exactly sure. Maybe he kept on swearing. Uh, I would like this for this translation to be excellent, like the original text. You know what? This is the first try. Uh, the next part. Han cứ chửi đứa chết mẹ nào đẻ ra thân hắn. He swore. Like translating this would mean he swore at the. He cursed out the person who gave birth to him. This is what he's moved on. This is the solution that he worked on in his brain. Uh, he cursed at the person who gave birth to him. So I would probably mirror the the part that I wrote in the first in the previous sentence which is like uh he war curse you probably will like have moved on to using curse at some point in the paragraph before uh now uh the one who gave birth to him specifically like working around the the, uh, the parent thing because he did not have parents she fell was like abandoned at the at the, the uh brick kiln like the abandoned brick kiln in the village that's just like a, a, a brick kiln that nobody used anymore and like he was uh, left there when he was like basically like a, a, an infant a, a tiny baby and like, somebody like picked it like Somebody took him in, so like in his head he doesn't. In his head he did not have parents, so like that's why this this whole paragraph of sentence are written this way. And like who the fuck did they know? He didn't know who gave birth to him. He uh didn't really have like a relation to the to those people except that like by this point he recognized them as the people who made him miserable because that that like because of them giving birth to him that he is alive this this text goes hard <laughs> uh, uh this the the who the fuck here uh i'm i'm like there is currently no fucking swear in this one and this really is like the perfect mirroring of the previous part you know and now here is like that's like the, basically the same word so maybe i can sneak the fuck in back in, in somewhere maybe the fucker that would be like a bit too like juvenile maybe I'm not sure. I'll, I'll keep it here. If you guys have any idea how to sneak that back in, feel free to let me know. Not entirely sure. There's a good hunchy fell. You're you're correct in the, with that, Alex. It's like it's like birthing him, and then like the next, like leaving his name to 
like be clarified in a sentence that doesn't really have to do with him anymore in a clause that doesn't have to do with him anymore then that kind of detail is like re really removes the the you know hun in there this thang thang is like the specific word to refer to a boy or a man that you specifically do not respect and find like either annoying or dangerous <laughs> uh you can also use it like uh affectionately if you talk about like a, a little kid and and you're like old if, if you talk in, in the age range of like a few years around you if you use tongue it usually means you don't respect them and you hate them but if you to use it for like kids or like people who are a lot younger than you it it is like uh it is a uh, the uh, affectionate but i will say dismissive yeah kind of yeah <laughs> I still like refer to my brother as like Tang M or like Tang D, which is like his like uh, nickname at home. Uh, it's like it doesn't like you know in in a setting like that it doesn't really mean a lot. But like if you talk about it, just some some guy out there, some some dude you don't really know or like you see around and you use Tang, it means you don't respect them, and you probably don't like them either. Uh, but like there's that guy Tang Ji Fiao. This is like I will say like what I the, the the impression I got first thing when I read this would be, uh, this is how he is referred to by the rest of the village. Like guy Tang Ji Fiao, Tang Ji Fiao, uh, guy Tang Dei. It's like it is like a it is a very common way to just refer to people you don't like, you know. So uh. Specifically, people you who you like perceive as like below you, beneath you in the hierarchy of like the society. Uh, so uh, I wonder if there is a way to uh, preserve that, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Mm. Do this is like. Hmm. If I was just writing like my own writing, if I would start using "son of a bitch" here, but I think that would be slightly funny given that like he is cursing out his literal mother, and now he's saying that like referring to his own name as like "son of a bitch" it would 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 you know there would be like a logic loop somewhere in there. <laughs> That's the thing though, right? Like, do you guys in English, like in a small community, if there's just like some weird person walking around, do y'all like know them by name? Or do you like, do you know, do you call them like by your name or something like that? I think like maybe it's just my experience with English or like in a community like that if you see some weird guy you will refer to them as like that person yeah that fucking guy or like that dude some type of guy you don't really like you know call them by name <laughs> so maybe it's just like Fucking Gmail, <laughs> you know, it's fucking John again. <laughs> and then, like, like, you know, uh, italicizes. This is it. <laughs> God, the respect to Franchise.
the people who translate fucking anime for y'all. This part. Anh nhìn sang vào mà chửi cái đứa đã đẻ ra chim phèo. Like, uh. Nhìn sang basically uh, translate to breathing her teeth. Uh. Basically, it, it signifies like the. He's like fucking. He's doing this with his whole body. He's a. Like, Put his he's putting his whole lungs into like cursing out his own mom. Uh, so like, see, <laughs> see, I, mm, I feel like seating doesn't talk about effort enough. It's just like put your whole ass into it, kind of deal. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we we we're discussing like such like important nuances of words over here. Um Of course it signifies effort but also it obviously reading your teeth signifies the you know the anger you feel. It is like effort, but also it's specifically like a very angry and like, I guess, feral type of effort. Maybe like I can work hissing into this. Mm. Would that be like too much like li like uh, liberation taken with the text though? Uh mm. actually, Alex, what you got? That is immediately first day of bringing this home is like already like the animal aggression analogies. You're correct. You're right. Uh, in English, that's a good way to explain uh, any emotional wrongs. You're right. You're right. What I'm thinking about for this one is uh, he hisses and spits curses at the person who bought who gave her to him that's what i'm getting at barks i hmm Browse might be it. Because like barks I feel like it's like a more open mouth kind of uh action. And like by this point it, it has become like, you know, it has boiled over into you know something that is you grit you grit your teeth to 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 say. Like usually that's the thing with like gritting your teeth in English, usually it means like you don't really want to say what you're saying. Okay. If you're you like, you gritting your teeth usually like at least in modern context from what I've seen is like you're saying something you definitely don't want to say out loud. <laughs> like saying something through through your teeth. Like you, you you don't like saying this, but you are. Yeah. But like uh in this context specifically it's about like him like like having yelled so much right now that like at this point it has become like you know it has come back to become like self-involved self-contained like since he's like you know he he has come around to like cursing at his own mother so uh now it has become like just a, a self-contained thing around him so it might be a bit more quiet than something like a bark uh but like it is like vicious 
which is why I was going for his and Smith's. Because like, it's like, it feels like poisonous, I think. Uh, Growl is close, but I feel like Growl is also like, un contained in the opposite way. Yeah. Um, um, I might keep, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. I think like the word Merthyr has taken on a different. You're, you're right. You're correct. So maybe probably I keep kisses and growls. Uh. Thing was like I think like a different thing in the context of a snake, which is something I keep thinking about when I I, re I, I was reading this for no reason. I don't know why. Maybe I was just like I just got the like influences from a different like more a much more modern uh, short story I read like a long time ago. I keep thinking about it. That one is also good, but in a different way. I think like it's good. I'm doing like air quote. It's is good as in like it. It taught me something about writing, but as far as the content goes, it's it doesn't get there yet. I might read it for y'all one of these days if I can find it again. It's like in uh the uh, like when uh magazine uh collection or something like that from like a long time ago. I might have to like actually dig to find it again. I'm not sure if I could still have it on him. You're fair. That's fair, his is cat adjacent. This is also, yeah, a different type of aggression, I think. Growl is also like, kind of. Oh, great. Yeah, that's definitely, that's not something that I picked up before. Uh, like the, the lightness of it. Uh, Chi Fiao is actually like compared to like dogs and stuff later on, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, and uh, it's just like the obvious thing because uh, cats are actually like common in that sense. Usually, if you say that something is like the bottom of the bottom, something is like you know, the the the, the fucking like bottom dweller of the society, you kind of compare them to dogs. Obviously, in modern context, it feels weird. But like, historically, that has been a thing and it is very present in a lot of different literature. As constantly, like, uh, coincidentally, maybe not. Probably not coincidentally, actually. There's also another, uh, uh, short story by the same author. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, uh, in a there's a different short story by the same author, with like a dog character. That's very that is like somewhat essential to the plot. It's also a tragedy because Nankao pre-revolution only writes tragedy because back then, what, what is you know the the. Uh, common uh, peasant life, but tragedy. So uh, that's what he writes. That was that's what he wrote. So that's another one I kind of wanted, kind of want to uh, translate later on. Maybe after this one because this one's I feel like it's more foundational. But like that other one, like complements this one very well, because like in this one, like the plot is about you know someone who is forced into violence, who like. After the amount of time of effort he put into living well or like like a good person, realized that he could not do it. And like this story is about violence, like I think this core is about violence that is done to you as a person in a system like that, and the the violence that you then commit, and like where it goes, and like in what way does it matter, and like the other story is about like the the reverse of that. Like trying to live without violence and how like ultimately that's meaningless, as in like you know the 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 duality of like doing violence uh in doing violence because it's the only thing you can do 
and trying to uh, e to avoid doing violence, and then having nothing you, you can do, is like I I feel like that is like a good like set of story to go together. But of course, like we do have to. Yes, not exactly resist even, like you have to do violence no matter what. I think like that is like the the. Uh, so like the, the synopsis of the other story is like there's a man a, a very old man like you know in in previous lives he would have been like you know a a, a village sage like a village uh, a senior but uh he could not like work because he's like old and frail he has a he has a son who got cons uh, who got conscripted to go to uh, to go work at the uh, either the coffee farm or the uh, the arabo farm which are both like basically like forms of death sentences usually you work there for like a few years and then you die because like you know basically is your indentured service for the the french government uh especially you know around this time of uh, writing which is like in the swing of uh world war ii already uh which means uh like i think like 43 44 or something like that uh Vietnam uh, came under the uh the rule of uh imperial japan instead of uh of colonial france so uh they started ramming up like uh like uh f fabrication and like production of uh materials and like you know like like rubbers like uh the, the materials to make like uh fabrics and stuff like that instead of crops and uh usually they work uh, workers to the point of like exhaustion and death uh and workers are usually conscripted like you you don't volunteer to work there if you have like a, a villages if you have like uh healthy men they they had to go to work at the farms like that and uh the main character of that story's uh the main character of that story uh son was a it was a, a you know able-bodied man so he got conscripted to work at like either coffee farm or rubber farm i need to like check it again uh but like he was sending money home uh to like to his uh, parents to like buy off uh the land that he was working on because like the land was uh beforehand the land be belonged to the a landlord obviously and then later on like you know under french colonial reign uh of course the land then came into uh possession of uh the people in uh authority the people authority back then which is you know the french government the the like uh fucking the, as you said like nation traders stuff like that uh and uh they have been like trying to get him to like sell off uh to to, to leave the land and stuff like that uh and as so far like he has been living off the money that his son sends home every like month or so like making it, that he makes at the uh, the rubber farm. I'm 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 keeping the rubber farm version in my brain until I am, until I'm corrected. Uh, but yeah, so so like he has a dog, who is basically his whole pride and joy. Is like his only joy left. The like after his son left for like uh for the rubber farm, and this whole story is about like him trying to uh contact his son to like uh either like move up to live with his son or like uh save his son from the rubber farm to like can come home and live and they like, farm with him at home and like live off that land that like the to to show that like you know the i think like the the actual uh policy back then is that like if you are not doing anything with the land you then like it will be you know uh it will be uh confiscated by this uh, by the government by, by the authority local authority to like you know add to uh working for uh, to, to farm and stuff like that so like if there is somebody who is like working the farm uh individually back then and he could be he would be able to like keep it like the the uh conflict and like the, the uh climax of that story is that uh he finds out that like his son 
stopped uh, sending home uh, money, basically implying that like his son's dead. And then uh, in the end, like to uh, make enough uh, money to like uh, pay the, the the land fee and stuff like that, he sells off his dog, which is you know like the 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 last line to tie him back to like uh, the, his current life. And uh, he sell off his dog to make like enough money, and then he instead of like paying the land fee with that, he buys like dog poison. Uh, like you know, it's because like people eat like dog meat here. So uh, that is like back then is like a specific way to like trap dogs, or like to kill dogs and like uh, yeah, to take them away. He, like he buys dog poison and he kills himself with it because you know. That that is like everything he has by now. There's nothing left. So like that is like you know the other facet of uh of like the life under uh colonial rule. Like you are you are either like room for violence. Like e either you accept violence and lose the person who to that violence, or you know you reject the violence and try to live a life, but. Ultimately, you are squeezed out of that life anyway. There's a lot. <laughs> I I think like that's like yeah, the the, the duality of that. It, definitely not like relevant today at all or something. I don't know. It's just, guess three 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 guesses why I'm trying to translate these things. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, obviously, like the answer to both of those stories, uh, came in the uh, form of revolution, which is why Nam Cao became a soldier, a revolutionary soldier, uh, post uh nineteen forty five. Something something uh, you can't work in the, you can't work with the system. Something something. <laughs> you know how it is. You know how it is. Oh, but yeah. Uh, let's finish this up. Uh, this uh, I do that. Is any she fell? This left off the the swear, and maybe I can like press it together, something. The word birther has like a specific connotation in English now. I think, like birther is a thing in modern day English. I don't think I can use it to like to cut the parent connotation out of yeah birther. To cut the parent connotation out of the word of, of any word that means to mean like you know like the person who gave birth to you. I want to like compress this a little bit because like I have used this same structure a while ago for the previous like two sentences. I feel like that's a bit too much already. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And not even like succulent. I think like oh yeah. <laughs> oh I took that whole sentence like it fucking like at, at like first impression value, at face value immediately. I'm so sorry for your phone, Alex. <laughs> oh boy. Um. Uh, hmm. You're being be bullied by your car. Right? Oh no. <laughs> We are gonna have to get like one of those like USB to uh phone cable kind of uh converter or whatever, and you're gonna have to plug in like a a a an analog like a normal like keyboard to be in chat. <laughs> Going through such loops to be able to chat with me, I would be so honored. But also, damn. Uh, me. I can like like repeat this uh structure actually. Oh my god, what did you do, Alex? Oh, <laughs> okay. I thought you got a whole setup. You know what? Congratulations. Welcome to PC. 
uh, I said, uh, the one who gave birth to him, probably, maybe, if I keep doing this, it will be read as, like, intentional and, like, forceful instead of, like, stupid and dumb. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, if you're a dumbass, that makes both of us. I think that's a match made in heaven. <laughs> dumbass to dumbass connection, dumbass to dumbass communication. I'm beaming dumbass thought at you, and you're deep beaming dumbass thought on me. That's two way. <laughs> this is the internet, baby. This is the highlight. So, like, I think, like, it's like coming out of like his perspective a little bit here which is like you know who the fuck gave birth to him then it comes to the fucker who gave birth to him and then now it's just like who gave birth to him we are removing slowly the, the swearing and stuff a gaggle me <laughs> you got two of us does that make a gaggle we need a bit more a, a number of more heathens i need to recruit heathens to our gaggle gotta make a heathen gangs the heathen the heathen crew okay i'm i'm setting i'm settling on this for a while the next part nhưng mà biết thế nào đã để nó chỉ phèo có mặt trời biết à không biết cả làm vũ đại cũng không biết nhưng mà biết thế nào đã để nó chỉ phèo i i think this one can be pretty like straightforward but who knows uh Okay, yeah, that is the thing now. If I just translate this like straight into English, it would be like, who knows who gave birth to Chi Fao? Which is, I feel a bit of a clumsy sentence. Like, I guess like the, the question now would be like whether that enhances or uh, takes away from the reading experience, I guess. Uh, who knows? Ooh, That's a lot of times I've said give birth to Chi Fiao right now. Made him. You're right. Actually, no, actually, I think like using who made him would be like a cool way to, to say it. Actually, because, yeah. Uh. It is something that we can parallel with, like, the end of the book, because, you know, the answer to who, you know, who made him this way is, you know, a very specific answer in the, in the, uh, context of the book, or of the, of the text. Like, giving birth to him is a different thing, but shifting away from that, like, making him the person he is right now, which is implied in, like, who made him. That has like yeah, it it has a uh an answer. The text in like the text like just outright answered it. Like he he was made to be this way by you know the the people in power. I like it. I I think like we can do that. Hell yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I I would like to incorporate that in actually. Uh. Maybe I can switch, like, do the, the switch in here. Like, should I switch it at the previous sentence or... Mm, who made him? I, I think I should, we should switch, like, earlier a little bit to keep, like, the line going. Not making it too, like, abrupt. Who knows who made him? Uh, có mặt trời biết này. Oh, it literally, oh, fuck, I keep touching my fucking mic, no. I forgot, I, I, I kept it on my, like, non-dominant side because I don't move my left hand as much, but apparently I do. I mean, yeah, <laughs> this is the, the, the curse of not actually knowing shit about translation. Is that like we are getting caught in, up in like a lot of details? That is a problem. But well, 
whatever we're doing, you know, whatever it's worth doing, it's worth doing this way. But much of it's just basically like, who knows? It's just like saying out loud, who knows, you know? But like, I think like the show is just like a, a way to look back to, you know, uh, the, the first part we, where he like, he, he cursed at the sky. It's like the same sky really in both ways. I think it's like a fun line to link back to, but I don't know if maybe actually maybe I can switch like Choi. I can the the first part can be like uh translated as like the heavens. And then like in the later part this here would be like heavens no, you know? That would be like a cool way. It might seem like a bit too fancy or what like the for the level of language that he's aiming for here. The main character we got. But like I feel like that that is like a good way to like mirror it back. Also, do I have to uh record the uh uh, the 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 fucking time or like whatever the fuck the tense of a verb in a sentence like this to the rest of them the rest of them are in like uh in the past in past tense but like heaven knows heaven know is like usually in like you know sent present tense do i have to put that in past tense too i've never learned this in english i only learned this in, in french I hate that I only know how to do this in French. It's so, it's so much easier in Vietnamese. You just literally this whole thing could have been like in any like tense in Vietnamese. Technically, it's like I guess present tense because it didn't uh have any of the words the the independent words that you can keep in or not that indicates clearly that this happened in the past, like da or vu or something like that. Uh, we don't have that. I mean, like, you got Verdi Vichy, which is, like, this verse different from, like, the verb. That is, like, what the fuck is that tense in French? I remember. Venir for the fact that shows it's basically, like, just, he, you just did something. We, we got a word, the verb also, like, work for that type of, like, tense. But I don't know. It's, it's not, like, required, really, in the writing, in Vietnamese writing. You don't have to indicate like it happened in past tense in the verb you don't have to like conjugate the verb at all about conjugation sometimes <laughs> sometimes a conjugation i'm keeping heaven's note for now uh the rest is hắn không biết cả làm vũ đại cũng không ai biết which me translates he doesn't know he didn't know the rest of the village. Kalamura, it, it doesn't really like include or uh, exclude, excludes him. Uh, by the, the reading of this, it would mean like includes him. Or actually, like with the gong here, it might mean like exclusion actually. Because like it's, 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 there are weird, like little. Uh, connotations that I don't know would like if it would like do anything for the text to keep them in. Uh, he didn't know. Neither does anyone else in the Budai. Hmm, that's the thing though. Some sometimes. Usually when you, like, it, a, a western, I guess, like, village, you don't really have, like, a name for them, I think. A village is just, like, a village, I think. And then you got, like, a city or a town or something, and it has a name. Sometimes over here, like, villages have names. Especially, like, villages uh, in the uh, area surrounding, like, bigger cities. Those have names because, like, they got, like, a lot more food traffic. Like very, very classically rural villages don't really have names. Uh, if 
there are since there were like blood blood people in those uh villages, maybe they would like earn a name sometime sometimes. But like usually uh if they're just like a bunch of people living like around each other, they don't really need a name or anything. So like I might have to like write this all down and figure out like uh if I'm made clear enough that uh the uh the name Huna is like ascribed to the to the village to the like location. Okay, I think we got enough to like start writing down like a, a draft here. Uh we got the first <laughs> the first paragraph done today. <laughs> I don't think we we can like pipe more than this. It's really is like a, a bunch of things in one. But I will probably read for y'all the next part, like one, like to two prime for like the next uh, stream when I do this. Uh. Uh. Okay. So. What we got right here is uh Han Bodi with Chui with the It's really is not a very pretty handwriting at all. But the most important thing is I could read this later on. <laughs> I, I I keep like I I had to like uh look back to this. I'm I'm translating this currently as is usual. Uh as always. I think like as always fits more but also it feels weirdly formal. But I I'm I'm currently I, I think I'm gonna keep in the draft as always and I'm on a note as you as is usual on on top of it like like writing in here like that now something like that to to tell people how to read this thing out loud <laughs> hope i can fucking parsing this these notes later on uh Uh, we start cursing. Uh, the moment there's that thing that is like all of the word that really, really implies the urgency of like uh actions like. Coming right next to the other action in English, like, I feel like are on the long side. You have to go the long way to like imply that this action is immediate, like you know the immediate, like or like the moment you do something, something stuff like that is always like longer. It's just kind of implied in Vietnamese. I don't know why. Like it would. Maybe it's just like my bias, like learning English this way that like is is making me this way, but. Uh, I'm going with <laughs> I'm going for a turn of phrase here that might sound like this dude is a toddler, but like the the the, the expression like the model. The word the bottle in English you can use to refer to like you know a bottle of alcohol or drunk like you know somebody's in the in the depth of the bottle or the bottom of a bottle or like someone who is like so fucking drunk who has been drunk for a while something like that but also bottle can also can, can be meant like the thing that like babies suck on <laughs> bottle like in the way that like has he got his bottle today yet which is the which means that like you know you're feeding a baby you're asking about feeding a baby <laughs> and i don't know how the sentence would be read <laughs> like the, 
I'm, I've got here is that like he started cursing the moment he finished his bottle. <laughs> and mm, I don't know. Maybe like the the duality of it is like something that can be argued for the text. I but I feel like more than anything it would end up like a controversial <laughs> translation choice. I don't know. Uh bottle i'm keeping it i think it's funny <laughs> yeah. at first uh first i just at the heavens i just changed that I, I like a, a translation project like this, which is like co comprehensive in a way that like the choices you made like throughout the text needs to be like not just a like, coherent I think but like actual rewriting I feel. It I, I like that like the, the things we've gotten like even if it's not like you know like correct in air quote translation, it, it uh, in parts, like I feel the the same kind of uh, looping narratives and metaphors and stuff like that, and that does go on. The those things that do go on in like the actual text, I feel like that is a thing that I like that uh, we can like somewhat replicate the style, but like with the the sensibility of English. I don't get. I don't think I do that a lot in like my normal writing. So like doing a translation with that is fun. Mm. Oh, hey, Z. What did I fucking translate as? Oh, hey, Z, yes. Mm. I think I'm, mm, I'm keeping this one as an what? Uh. Heavens? Long. Mm. The one is specific. So I'm too doy. Then he cursed her. Uh... Life. I'm keeping the word life for now, but I might like amend this later. I don't feel like super comfortable with using the word life right now. Okay, which has, uh, no matter either. I've lives no one. I've all also no one or this is like yeah, you you can tell that this is like a crude like first draft translation. These these sentences are just happening. Noid. Vì ngay tất cả làng vũ đại thì I just realized this notebook might be a bit small for me. <laughs> I'm like doing the thing where like you know my hands is like at the, the pen is at a different level of elevation from the rest and it feels kind of 
uncomfortable. I might have to like layer something on this side later on to <clears throat> keep my hand in like the same level of elevation. Make writing like more comfortable for me. Uh, the entirety. Hell yeah. I mean, like, honestly, my work is the first draft. I, I think, like, somebody should be picking this up after me. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing the starting, I'm doing the start, because, like, apparently nobody's doing the goddamn start. Maybe I'll also get a better pen later, because, like, I feel like this, like, this uh, notebook uh, works better with like a water pen than like this this kind of pen. Hell yeah. I would like, you know what my biggest dream after, when I finish this project and get this online? My biggest dream would be to, for a professional Viet to English translator to, to see this and say out loud online to everyone to hear that my translation fucking suck and they would do better and then they do it. I would like that. I would fucking love that. <laughs> this is also probably the same way that I uh I can't like conceptualize anything that I do when it comes to like comic and like especially like you know we focus stuff like that and uh comics that has more like bit theme and stuff. It's just like I will do it so fucking badly that oh look you who has like a modicum of standard would feel like offended enough to pick the pen up and do it yourself. I will do like the bad example so you feel like you need to do the good example. <laughs> That's how I keep myself going, I guess. Uh okay, where are we? Uh Ninka Dang Ninka Lang Wu that I could know. But everyone in the village? I think I need to add to the scrolling text later on that like my only experience with translation of like fictions, uh, fiction and you know fictional text and stuff like that uh, uh, was uh, translating my own fiction, my own fan thing <laughs> just to make y'all like really get into it with me uh, in the village Uh, show themselves. I'm doing like the more uh, English, I guess, uh, kind of uh, dictation and uh, punctuation stuff. Cause like I think I will be forgetting later on, and it will switch back to it anyway. So maybe like starting it this way would be easier for me. Probably. Cursing at me? Swearing at me? I think, like, people thinking of him in the term of, like, swearing would be, like, you know, one more kind of dismissive kind of, uh, experience, uh, like, what expression. The way that this just, like, Wow. I think like next session I will have to do with like a uh more uh when I have a larger block of time because like otherwise I don't know if we can make it through like these whole pages. Uh Hong Lin Tian Ka. Uh what's like
nobody. Acknowledged him. That's that's Alex's uh, suggestion. The the acknowledgement. Okay, this part the the tức thật tức thật oh thế này tức thật tức chết đi được mất those things I I think I I was like the note I got here is like to restructure this. I th I think like instead of like trying to keep this in place, I will be trying to push the like escalation part before he was annoyed and now I'm like. Hmm. I would be like, uh, now he's angry. Now he's really angry. The, the onomatopoeia is definitely a more like westernized uh, twist to the language that came like you know with the colonial, colonial range uh, usually we don't do that once again I did say that before uh, this is infuriating But I think I just like made note about this. I didn't really like make a, a, a the draft translation on hand. So like I'm gonna keep it right like this right now. Oh, I need to like read. Uh, oh dang. I I genuinely do have a problem with keeping like the the tense and like the 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 conjugation like correct in English. I frequently forget like if there is a second verb in the sentence I will forget like to 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 uh conjugate like the the second verb properly and the tense is obviously all over the place with me it's very cool that I never have like, an a beta reader or I reread my draft at all whenever I write like fanfics and stuff y'all are taking whatever I get out <laughs> this is not about quality fiction for me actually any kind of like writing that isn't in a comic for me is not about quality i'm very sorry to tell you except for this translation i do kind of want this to be about quality a little bit the drama keeping the drama on the up and up That's so it was cursing out. Mm. Đứa nào không chửi nhau với hắn Đứa nào không chửi nhau với hắn này What we're getting I, before I was like The people who didn't let him pick a fight Hmm
Ik heb gewoon mijn bed hier. Ja, dat is de hele scene komt is like, like being able to compress that into still was like such a like good like aesthetic feeling for me for no reason. God, I keep like me doing this and like uh, thinking slightly about uh, other translators, people who actually do this stuff for like money and got trading in this. Also, like, why did my imagine say start like folding inward? That's weird. Why did I do that? Uh, but yeah, me thinking about people who actually knew how to translate stuff. And was like, oh, did they uh, ponder over words? Did they uh, do, do they uh, quarrel with each other over uh, choices of the translation? Do they do a, a, a sentence, uh, make wars between them? I just remember what, how translators are, obviously, they, they all do that. Of course they fight each other over translations. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> Thinking about the, all, the Iliad. Thinking about Greek myths translated. Those motherfuckers fought each other for years and years. It's fine. Sometimes it's comforting to know that, you know, translator, there is no like universal Jimmy translators. Every craft uh, that you pick up, any kind of, uh, any type of art form that you dabble in, the people who are they like, considered experts in those fields, the people who are considered the like, authority or whatever, those are still like people. They are not, you know, there's no like Jim, once again, no Jimmy translator who like dictates a translator on earth or something like that. There will always be choices and there will be people who make those choices in the different ways and they will be fighting each other. <laughs> they will be fighting. So like, just, just do your shit, you know, just do your shit. Like if if you do it like badly enough in a fun enough way, you will become like a third like fraction, <laughs> a another a new like old new old like improved fraction to fight with the rest. Isn't that fun? Uh, where did I get to? Uh, okay. I s I like the idea of sneaking a son of a bitch in here because like the drama of it. The makeup, I think like, I was holding that at shit or like damn. If it's here, it's gonna be damn it. But I like like the, the bite of son of a bitch, right? Because like makeup is like. I guess like you can say damn it in a way like that, but it feels that like somehow. Damn it is such a like a that swear. <laughs> like it feels slightly toothless. Even god damn it. It feels like. I don't know. It's just it feels slightly family friendly as far as anything goes, even though like maybe just because I'm not Christian. <laughs> so like you know that the the naming of your, the God doesn't make me flinch or make me think that it's like the height of like sins or whatever. So to me, it's just like damn it, God damn it, it's just a like schoolyard kind of swearing. So like makeup, I feel like, yeah, pushing it into like son of a bitch territory rather. So I'm gonna go with son of a bitch. I I would like to like drop one of those in here <laughs> because I I like son of a bitch because son of a bitch has like the the kind of like family uh, like hierarchy hierarchy that comes with like normal Vietnamese like swearing. Like over here, if you swear at people, you swear at like, you know, you curse out their whole family. You, you curse out your mo their mom, their dad, and stuff like that. Like with English, it's always like directly at the person. And the son of a bitch is like, I think like the one thing I can remember that is like in common parlance that has to do with, you know, the, the family around you. <laughs> it's like, it's like coming home for me. Uh, okay. And 
like Matt Gatwood like tying it towards uh the, the the talking about life before as far as like writing goes and like as far as we are reading into the text goes but I think the son of a bitch would tie it like to the later block making this part like a a, a, a cut between like the previous sentence and this block which is coming into like him swearing at his mom his own mother I we will see if like that that uh, choice like works out in the flow of things I will probably like have to read this out loud to uh oh dang uh what a waste also like for real though do y'all just use alcohol in like normal way to refer to alcohol you say like because like in Vietnamese it's just like zero uh beer is beer and uh wine is your bang so like you know and most things are alcoholic is alcohol uh except for beer which is beer <laughs> i don't know why that's really funny actually what a base booze you yeah it's i do use booze but like i actually i don't actually know a lot about the word booze itself but i think like booze would like come more into the realm of what like you know the character would use maybe otherwise i would know about the word like fuel or like i don't know those words are <laughs> something probably i'm gonna use booze you're right uh did he go ho did he go ho han from Actually, it's actually like reading this. I just realized like you he could have written this as a like, he can go ho hum, and he go ho cho han hum. But like yeah, usually like when you write about this, it's like when you write about it like this way, it is definitely like implying that like life is being like a bitch to you. Like you know, you are not really like experiencing the bitch of life as like a, a an actual like active participant like an active participant rather like you know right life is happening to you this is like a very like typical like lament kind of deal like you know victim it would be called like you know the, the victim mentality or like casting yourself as a victim which in this case not wrong <laughs> i would say this is like pretty like Far had a uh, fucking uh, uh, like foreshadowing as if we read into the text this way. Welcome to literature class. Uh, what I'm getting and uh, what I'm like, uh, what I've written here is like, what a miserable existence. Ah, fuck. God damn it. I forgot this. Like, my, my phone is here. Because uh, I want to, I wanted to uh, mirror the sentence structure. I think like the if we start characterizing GPL as like somebody who knows only the big words when it comes to like misery and violence. Like he would, he as in like someone who is violent and who is like a champion and lamenting, while at the same time not like knowing enough to figure out that like his misery comes from like a very specific source. Uh, it's like I I feel like that is that would be slightly different in terms of the. Like, uh, characterization. Uh, for like for the the main uh from like the original text, because in the original text he's just like a brute. He's like you don't really get to read like the 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 eulogy of cursing from someone like this. So like he's not even really like a very creative kind of person when it comes to uh talking at all. He he just uses his words as like you know a form of violence at all and like a very inelegant violence in general so like he's not really a, someone who uses big word at all but i i feel like if we push him towards like a more you know someone who is like kind of a pro at lamenting it would 
fit more with like a more a, a, a western i guess uh or you know the the, the a western vision or you know the the trope of like this comes back to like squid game a little bit but like the trope in uh korean pop culture and like literature of like someone who is like not learned but very smart in like specifically you know in a culture that like uh, values uh uh, degrees and like uh, papers and you know uh, valid validations right like any submissions more than the the innate the, like ability by someone yeah yeah if we acknowledge the the duality of that a little bit oh yeah i i think that would be like a, a choice that we can make that to to make the work to to uh make the writing like flow a little bit better and like be and like have that be uh Ex excuse a little bit in the in the translation it 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 is kind of a facile way out for me to be able to write things <laughs> but i i think like it can still work it can still work like instead of like chifel like having nothing in him oh still imply that it is, has been been out of him by the system like we have a chief that still has potential and like had like still shows potential and stuff like that but still even with those potentials that is that are like visible even on a surface you still you know you you can he still like has no chance it, it is a choice i think that's something that i will have to like my, like think about for a while before i can uh settle on it but currently i think like with that, with that, like, uh, with that rope, I would have a, an easier time with the translation. <laughs> it's like my brain just bounces back, back and forth between like nothing but swearing and like words that are like ten sen sentences long or something. Sometimes I don't remember words. Sometimes I only remember very long words. <laughs> this is bad. This is not good. Uh, where did the fuck did I get to? uh yeah i got like this whole part about uh this this translation here Ooh, fuck. uh give birth to him to make him such a miserable wretch just like shading words between sentences to like keep it together and not lock. Also, this is like the first time I've written this anything this long with, with like my hand with my handwriting. So <laughs> I honestly I don't know if my handwriting will get better or worse from here on. Like if if I get very tired, my handwriting would be like bad. <laughs> it would get basically unreadable the whole time. And my actual like handwriting on my my laptop looks worse than this. This is better to look at, I think, or at least to read. Except for like the comic stuff, which is like basically me, me like chasing out a letter, like a fucking like a middle schooler, like a a first grader. Because it's kind of a font. It's not exactly just handwriting. Such a miserable word. Also, I did pick up like a... Uh, along with this copy of uh, Chi Fiao, of like Nam Kao Short Story Collection, uh, I got a book of, uh, of a play, a play in Vietnamese, uh, by... Uh, Fucking, I forgot his name again, goddammit, but like the Tôi và Chúng Ta and Hồn Chúng Ba Giang Thịt. Those are like, I think that that specific uh, author got like implicated in like a huge scandal. Scandal was like, I mean political scandal. <laughs> Back when like we were still in like the modern, like, modernization period. Like in the, in the um, like uh, period. A lot of shit happened like in the, uh, in in the uh like lit literature and like art scene back then like whether they were like pro uh pro or against the government and 
because like the thing is like art and government are kind of tied together in Vietnam is a thing which is why I am with an international uh fucking audience right now I don't think I can make it in Vietnam because I can't play, play nice with people who like you know who look like who, who are in like positions of authority I'm a very rude person in general I think in Vietnamese specifically That that whole thing, I might pull up like a special number about that while I draw something later on because like, I think that's fascinating. It's slightly tragic, I think. It is very tragic. A lot of like very great talents who made like extremely important pieces of art got implicated uh, in this uh, whole scandal back then, and like they basically like their whole career w was ruined, and like they left, uh, they lived in poverty until the day they died. It was a whole thing. God, it like. I just realized with the stream, I've started like bringing, <laughs> I've started talking out loud about the the knowledge I've like saved up of uh, the shit that happened in Vietnam. Also, I just realized this is uh, the 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 absolute uh, fucking lighting of this. Can I get a yeehaw? It looks like I'm in a fucking dungeon. I'm not doing that. I'm I'm turning on the light. Wait wait a second. I need like a fucking uh like this lamp or something like that. There you go. And I need to see things, probably. Oh my god. Also one downside of uh this specific notebook is the the paper gray being like this shade. But like, I think now y'all can see what I'm fucking doing. I'm very sorry for the last like fucking half an hour or something like that in the dark for you guys. Oh, uh, where the fuck did I hear? Okay. Uh, uh huh. Uh, here. And good tema to him Carry it on. Um, cursing. Maybe this would be changed to swearing. Too late. You know, because I... I started the next clause of uh, the sentence this way. Or phrase. Is that the word in English is phrase, not clause, right? I just realized. <laughs> But okay, I didn't actually learn any grammar stuff in English. I only learned them in French. Fucker. The fucker is like such a juvenile word to use here, actually. I might change it. Okay. Uh Is there an out here? I will leave it out. Mm. One. Mm. Make. Yeah. Jenny Lee, thank you very much, Alex, for helping me with this today. This is a lot of these choices are like choices you uh, advise me on. It, it was very good. 
I'm, I'm like genuinely a lot of them I feel like very like satisfied about genuinely somewhat proud of feels like slightly weird being proud of the work of someone else who is currently in chat with me but yeah I genuinely like like a lot of the things you brought up obviously which is why I uh incorporate them into my translation but like I will definitely be uh crediting you I think and honestly I would probably be crediting everyone in chat that's like <clears throat> I think just like normal uh just like what the fuck courtesy common courtesy is something you just do uh who knew who knew who knows knows i have a problem with like uh yeah according to tense or uh common uh like expressions like that i think when we were learning this in school we made like so many jokes about like uh hắn đứng chửi đứa chết mẹ đứa đẻ ra thế thằng chim phèo hắn nhớ ra và một chửi cái đứa đẻ ra chim phèo nhưng mà biết đứa nào đã đẻ ra chim phèo immediately like all of us given that we are like teenagers we made a joke of like the the author being the one who birthed chim phèo <laughs> it's very like no kind of out of nowhere nonsensical and the typical Smart ass, uh, smart ass teenager way. I think that's like warranted for all of us. Okay. This one. What was that? He didn't know. Nobody in the village. You either clean first page. Uh, okay, I'm gonna make some notes. What's usual? to remind me of like some of the choices that I will be making when I finalize this. Mm. Freaking there. Now you guys can see it actually. Creating mm. uh, swearing hmm. <clears throat> The fucker thing, like, I still, I'm not, like, satisfied with this choice of words. We'll see about it. Uh, he has some wrong press. Out, maybe. The one who made she fell. This is an Alex choice. The one who made him. Heavens, no, he didn't know. Nobody in the village knew either. Okay, I'm gonna read through this out loud. See how it flows. I don't know if it actually will do me any good because I once again I barely speak English. <laughs> but we'll see. Okay, so freaking turn off the music for now. Okay, she fell by Hamka. He was cursing as he walked. 
As always, he started cursing the moment he finished his model. Rejoice it. At first, he cursed at the heavens. And what? The heavens belong to no one in specific. Then he cursed out life. No matter either. Life is all, but also no one. Annoyed, he cursed out the entirety of Wudai village. But everyone in the village stole himself. He's probably not swearing at me. Nobody acknowledged him. Now he's angry. Now he's really angry. Oh, that's, inf that's infuriating. He's so angry he could die right here. But that's so. He was going to curse out whoever didn't let him pick a fight. Still, nobody responded. Son of a bitch! What a waste of booze! What a, what a miserable existence! Who the fuck gave birth to him to make him such a miserable watch? Aha! Uh -huh. He carried on cursing. Cursing out the fucker who gave birth to Ji Fell. He hissed and growled out curses at the one who made Ji Fell. But who knows who made Ji Fell? Heaven knows. He didn't know. Nobody in the village knew either. You know what? That's fine. <laughs> I think that's fine. Actually, I just like picked up something I forgot to note down. Actually, that's good. Where the fuck was it? The... Here. This was gonna was gonna curse out. I think I need to change that. Not sure about this choice. I think like usually would say he will curse out. He would curse out. Actually, I don't know if would is like a good. Curse out. Cause like I feel like would curse out. It has like a delay for the action. It's not as like immediate as urgent as urgent as was on a curse out. Yeah, that's that's what we got today. I think like we got like the first paragraph, which I think is one of the most important paragraphs. Uh, in uh, the story overall, given that it's like you know the the uh introduction of a character, the the first characterization, the uh setup for like the his whole arc. That's good. That's good. That we got this much. Uh, I think I will be wrapping up. Uh, we will obviously start next time on from this and hopefully the next page <laughs> hopefully we could like get the next page done i think this is gonna be like once again a multi-hour uh, stream thing uh there are like a number oh yeah uh there there's i think like this thing is like 30 something pages of this type of text so that would Hopefully, be the amount of streams that we will be on, and then like streams to like finalize it too as well. Maybe, maybe I can do that off stream because I don't think there will be like a lot, a lot of discussion going on. It just be me like humming and like having at the 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 text I got in my notebook until like I got done. That's it. But yeah, hey, I thank you guys for stopping by the first translation stream G fail. I hopefully I can keep this up. Hopefully we can like finish this stuff together. Uh, I'm not sure about a a schedule because I don't think I'm gonna work well with a schedule no matter what. I'm not a very good like I'm not good with schedule in general. So uh, I guess if you're interested in this stuff, just I I will be saying I will be like announcing the stream stuff on my the Twitter of course. Uh. So I guess I like, uh keep an eye on that. I might start like documenting this stuff on my Tumblr too. Uh to you know have like, a copy of everything. So I don't have to start at the at the beginning if anything happens or this like specific copy. Uh but yeah. I thank you guys for stopping by the stream. Thank you guys for keeping me company through all of that. Through fucking like three hours or something of me talking about uh GPL and like specific words and asking about English as if I've never like uh I've never speak English in my life spoken spoke as a word spoke. Uh thank you specifically to Alex for very very cool uh translation choices that uh I've I've elected to steal. <laughs> From, from him, I will obviously be uh, uh, 
uh, the credit video in the final draft. Uh, the next stream will probably not be a translation stream. It, I don't know what it will be. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, hell yeah, for the greater good. For the greater good, baby. I uh, hope this one has been fun for you. I hope like some of the things I've said has been has been like of, of uh, some uh, educational value or entertainment value for you. Uh, I will. I hope to keep this up, and I will see you again very soon. Uh, have a good night to anyone who's going to sleep in chat, and if not, have a good rest of your day. See ya.